Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Welcome to day 14 of Teaser Season for patch 3.25 and the upcoming Settlers of Kelgo expansion. Today, of course, was the massive livestream reveal by Grinding Gear Games. People have asked me to post my initial thoughts, my initial first reaction to these notes, and that's what this video is. Fair warning, it's going to be lower production quality than usual, it's just basically a livestream VOD, so keep that in mind. The sound in particular is going to be crangled because there were some sound issues on Grinding Gear Games' end, and I can't post-process as much because I need to get this out quickly as people want to see quick reactions. So keep that in mind. Some of the key high points though to look for in this, there is going to be a currency trading system that's being tested in the Settlers of Kalgur mechanic. And in order to undermine the dominance of trade bots, it's going to have gold as a sink. Gold is something that's being added to the game just in the league to test it out. And then if they like the way that it plays, it's going to be added into the main game as well. This is going to be something that is essentially a measure of how much you've been playing the game. And then it's going to be used to gate how quickly you can do these currency trades. This is basically currency for currency, stackable scarab for stackable scarab, and a lot of other commodities within Path of Exile, but you'll not be able to trade crafted items with it. The Settlers of Kelgo mechanics look complicated and interesting. We will have to definitely play around a lot more with these. I'm going to do a live stream discussion in depth of the patch notes, which is something that will probably go into this a bit more, but this video will have my very first thoughts on things as well. Additionally, there's a whole bunch of information that you can look up on the Path of Exile official website at the moment. Uh, some of this is going to be things like just gameplay screenshots and the like, but there's also going to be information on the King's March Town, which is going to be a major focus of 3.25's League, and this is going to be somewhere that you'll be able to recruit NPCs to basically manage the town for you while you go kill monsters. But they will also be able to do a bunch of other stuff, like even go and clear your lower tier maps for you, which is going to be a lot of fun to play around with. This is an interesting mechanic, Gonna have to see how it plays out in practice, but it does seem like there's a lot of cool stuff going on there. There are, of course, boat trade routes, because it is a boat league, even if it's not really a boat league, and you'll be able to send off shiploads of goods, and then potentially have to protect them from pirates, which will be a combat encounter, and then when they come back, they will be bringing loot with them. This was the original implementation that they had, but they do think that things are going to be changing quite a bit. So we'll find out the exact details once the event goes live, but I'm thinking it'll be something like a Tujin window that we'll be expecting to see from there. As we mentioned, there's the ability to delegate map running to your NPCs that you've got there, and occasionally they'll get themselves in trouble. Occasionally they might even get themselves killed. One of the main rewards that's being added here is Kalgurin crafting, which is going to be a way that you can modify items that's going to compete with the harvest enchants and the heist enchants on weapons, and they look like they're potentially really good, like trigger a socketed fire spell on hit with a 0.25 second cooldown. One of the key things to this though, is that these are going to be absolutely hard locked to particular item classes. Only one-handed axes can get this fire-based Mjolnir ver variant. Here we've got the Terramol with 41% of weapon X physical damage added as extra of each element. This is absolutely exclusive to two-handed maces. So you're not going to be able to get this on a two-handed sword or on a high stagger. You're going to be absolutely limited to particular base choices. And that's going to give a bit more of a feel of difference from one weapon class to another. Because, of course, this is a melee league. There are huge, huge, huge changes to the way that melee is going to feel. Additionally, Recombinators are coming back in a form. Recombinators are going to be weaker than they were in Sentinel, and there's going to be a few differences to them, and they're not going to be itemized. Instead, they're going to be something you can spend your Settlers of Kalgur exclusive resources on, and you'll be able to recombinate items yourself. The currency trade market, though, I expect will be the biggest thing in this league, and this is the ability to trade one type of currency to another asynchronously with other players. So if you've got a whole bunch of Eldritch Exalted Orbs and you want to get a whole bunch of Mirrors of Calandra, you can offer a deal and people will probably say no to it. But you can make that offer. More realistically though, there's a whole bunch of things that you can put in here that are things that you probably do get a chance to get in bulk. I think this is going to feel really good with certain types of currency like the Tailoring Orb and the Fracturing Orb that come from particular content specifically. This is going to mean that you're not going to have to be portaling out of your heists or whatever in order to trade these to other players. 
And of course, you'll be able to spend your gold on other things like items that are going to have some of the bonuses that were associated with Necropolis, like the high tier rating stat that you could get in the Necropolis mechanic. Whilst you're not going to be able to do any Necropolis crafting in 325, there'll be ways to get something vaguely along those lines from the black market, where rare items will end up being better than would normally be the case, and that that will be done through the use of them having a fair amount of tier rating investment in them. Of course, there'll be new items, like Svalon here, this Gerda Tower Shield, which is a ward-based, but also ward and armor together. And it has a number of interesting mechanics, like a trigger a socketed elemental spell on block with a 250 millisecond cooldown. Chance to block is lucky is huge, but it does nerf your maximum attack block and your maximum spell block. This does, however, look like a really solid shield. And the fact that it's got ward on it is an extra defensive layer that will take some of the edge off some of the hardest hits. There's actually quite a lot that relates to ward in this expansion. There's also an overhaul of the Gladiator Ascendancy, which has a number of cool, interesting things in it, and this is going to be something we'll really have to play around with. Retaliation skills are a major focus here. Retaliation skills are something that's new, but strongly related to the existing counterattacks that exist in the game that not many people use. And the intention here is that these are not particularly amazing unless you invest in them, but if you do invest in them, they become really good. And these retaliation skills are basically extremely powerful things you can do once enemies cause you to meet a certain trigger condition. And we have the change to the Raider, which is that the Raider is being deleted entirely and replaced by the Warden. The Warden is going to be heavily influenced by patch 3.23's various ascendancies that were Wildwood ascendancies. And this is going to have pieces of those, such as tinctures, which are going core, and tinctures will also be craftable, and a number of other things related to different mechanics as well. So you can inflict elemental ailments reasonably effective with things like Oath of Winter, Oath of Summer, and Oath of Spring, which will all do different things to what's existed previously. And also there is Avatar of the Wilds, which is something that is also in that sort of theme of elemental ailments and dealing elemental damage. But at the same time, so that maintains the phasing aspect of the Raider's elemental affinity, but in a completely new shell. You also have the option of using tinctures, and you also have the option of using bark skin, which is something else that came out of the Wildwood Ascendancies. So lots of interesting things there. It's a totally new Ascendancy, and I expect a lot of people will play around with it, and we'll have to see exactly how that goes. Of course, there is a massive balance overhaul coming. Uh, life rolls on items are going to be much higher. And there is a complete overhaul, i.e. a complete removal, finally, of Magic Find as a player stat that's giving item quantity. Item quantity is no longer going to exist on items. And for instance, Venter's Gamble is now going to have Mana Reservation Efficiency instead. This is going to be really, really, really transformative. Rarity is still going to exist, quantity is not. One of the things that they mentioned when they were talking about the question and answer session, which you'll see late in this video, is there were players in 3.24 who were getting more than 100,000 unique items dropping per map. And this was something that was allowing just a few dozen players, we're talking literally dozens, we're not even talking one-tenth of one percent of the player base, to completely crash the trade league market on a whole range of different unique items. They're making a number of changes to prevent that happening again, one of them is hard caps on how much monster quantity can exist on a monster, and the second one is the removal of player quantity. What their goal here is, is that for beginner, intermediate, and advanced level players, it's going to be no change, but for the most advanced players, the sort of people who were capable of running strategies that were getting a thousand or more unique items to drop per map, those strategies are just never going to work again, and as a result, that upper couple of thousand players are going to see this as a massive nerf, Whereas for everyone else, it's going to mean that items that drop on the ground will be a bit more exciting than they've been in the past. I also think that's something that allowed them to bring back the Wildwood. Endgame content improvements is interesting. There's going to be a number of new chisel options, which are rarer than existing chisels, I believe. At least that's what it seems like from what they were talking about. And these are going to do more interesting things than the baseline chisels. Additionally, you're going to be able to fight the King in the Mists if you want. And there's also things that were previously teased, like the Prismatic Oil, but there's also the Titanic Scarab of Legend. Unique monsters in the area have two additional monster modifiers, so something that's going to make unique monsters get rare monster mods and be scarier. 
There is also a new divination scarab that's being added, the divination scarab of pilfering, but there is also a rework to other divination scarabs that are going to stop them from being extreme, extreme multipliers to divination cards. Divination cards are going to be significant still, but one of the things that Grinding Gear Games have done, every time they've made it so that divination scarabs that were loot multipliers got more common in the past, they've then gone and made nerfs to the rarest divination cards in the game. I think what they're doing here is addressing that problem by instead looking at the real problem, which is divination scarabs multiplying loot rather than adding to it. And now all the divination scarabs are simply going to add loot, with the exception of the pilfering one, which is going to be really funny if it's used in conjunction with Reign of Chaos maps, because Reign of Chaos maps are then going to cause the final boss to be empowered a very large number of times. Uh, there's going to be some massive upgrades to console ports, so that's something that will be really good for console players. And of course, as always, there are new supporter packs. But one thing I do think is worth keeping in mind, and this is on the pathofxl.com forward slash settlers page, there is also a press kit that I highly recommend downloading. If you're the sort of person that likes Path of Exile themed wallpapers and the like. Uh, there's a whole lot of really good high res images there. Anyways, let's jump into my first thoughts now. I'm going to leave it there. May Valobs have interesting results. And once more, apologies for the mediocrity of the sound in parts of this, but that is the consequence of using a VOD of a recording. Howdy all, grab yourself a drink. These were my first reactions to the patch 3.25 announcement. So this is a couple of minutes before we get going with the major live stream announcement. These will be my initial thoughts. These might be a bit rough in places. I will definitely make mistakes but people have requested my initial thoughts, they're going live. My plans from here are that I will be doing a live stream discussion of the patch notes over here on YouTube, in addition to what you see now, which is a past broadcast from Twitch. So, those are my plans. Let's see what Grinding New Games throw at us though. 3.25, major live stream reveal in just a minute or so. Kick back and relax as we watch the world burn. Alrighty. Now, one thing that's going to be really confusing to those that are watching this after the fact on YouTube, I'm going to be talking to my Twitch chat occasionally here, which is going to feel reasonably disjointed. I will try to call out what they're saying, but you'll get things like, hey, NTP, thank you for the Prime sub. And that's going to look kind of confusing because you're not going to see the triggering event the way that it popped up in Twitch chat. Anyways, that's just the way it works. That's the drawback to doing a rebroadcast. I'm going to make my face a little bit smaller here, because uh, you know what I look like, but you don't necessarily know what else is going to be on the screen, and I'm going to move it as well, because I don't think I want to be in one of the corners of the screen. We are live, here comes GGG right now. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Hi, I'm Krilson of Winning Peer Fame. Today, we're going to show you an exclusive reveal of Path of Exile Settlers of Calgar, which launches next week on July 26th. Twitch drops are enabled on today's livestream, so make sure you follow the instructions below in order to claim your Corsair back attachment. In today's stream, we will take you on a deep dive into the new Settlers of Currency Calgary. trade market? We'll cover the league mechanics. If they've jumped the shark and they've brought in the POE2. trade market system for currency. Some sweeping balance improvements, including oh. two ascendancy class changes, end game improvements, some further additions to the campaign, and some quality of life features. We'll then talk about our console native port releases and the features that come alongside them. Finally, we'll show you our new supporter packs, ending with a live Q&A session where Ziggy D will ask Path of Exile's game director, Mark, your questions. Can I make it louder? Okay. Uh, After the live stream, we'll it's the actually as loud packs. as it can be. Sorry, folks. I'll hand over to Mark now to introduce the new league. We're really innovative with the content in this league, and I'm really excited to see what everyone thinks. So let's just get right into it with the trailer for Path of Exile: Settlers of Kalgur. Settlers of Cowgirl. Rayclast is a cursed land. You'd have to be mad to settle here. And yet... Welcome to King's March! <laughs> this is a town from POA 2. But with your help, we can erect the greatest city Rayclast has ever seen. We'll need resources. And savvy planning. Soon we'll attract settlers. 
Farmville. Craftsmen. Fortune seekers. I missed that item there. And of course, pirates. Okay, so lots of bosses here. But if we prevail, our ships will be heavy with gold. And we have boats. We hope to achieve the impossible. <laughs> Recombinators we it is. To build a home. Join the settlers of Kalga. Gold? Okay. Warden Ascendancy class. Yeah, there's our there's our recombinators. Oh, black market. Yeah, Raider might be gone. In Path of Exile, settlers of Kalgur, you will encounter some familiar faces from the Expedition League. Danig, Rog, Tujin, and Gwenin are Kalguran people who are trying to establish trade between Rayclast and their homeland. They have recruited many curious characters from Rayclast, including some you may recognize, but are also seeking help of a powerful exile, like yourself. You will first encounter Johan, the King's Hand and Lion Eyes Watch. He's there recruiting workers, traders, and exiles. Johan, under the command of the King of Kalgur, has been sent here to build a new city called King's March, which intends to become the hub of commerce between Rayclast and Kalgur. Okay. Soon, he will bring you to the planned site for King's March, which you'll notice has humble beginnings as just a tavern in a field. But with your help, it won't stay like this for long. It takes a lot to build a town. The Kalgurans will ask you to seek out resources that can be used to begin construction. On your adventures, you might find minerals such as crimson iron, which are veins of iron that have been overrun with corruption, spawning dangerous foes when you approach. So an in-map combat event. Or perhaps Orakalkum, which you will have to liberate from the demons worshipping it. Petrified Amber attracts mindless blighted enemies. While Bismuth has a strong affinity to the elements and causes oh. the area to become unstable. Bismuth very calandra esque You might find Varisium, a material as valuable as it is dangerous, and guarded by very powerful foes. Once you defeat these monsters, the deposit will automatically be tagged for mining. But first, we need to get someone to do the hard labor. This is of course a trade expedition and nothing is free. Miners, along with other workers that the Kalgurans have hired, gold, yep. paid in cold hard gold, which you'll notice is now dropping throughout Rayclast. You will have control about who gets hired into your enterprise. Once you have accumulated some gold, head to the town and talk to the recruiter, Ralf. He's been busy tracking down hardy folk across Rayclast who are looking for work. Ah, yep. You'll notice each person has their specialties and a wage cost. Shipping? It'll be up to you to hire and fire as you please. Over the course of the league, you'll be searching for your perfect employees for each job. Once you have them, you'll have to keep them paid, safe, and alive, which we'll get into later. <laughs> Here we have a prospect who has a specialty in mining. Gold incoming we'll dupes. So Whoa. we can begin to retrieve some of those resources we were talking about earlier. Let's go find some more and put our miner to use. Oh, we found a vein of Orichalcum ore. It's guarded by dangerous demons worshipping a strange shrine. The shrine buffs the demons, giving them power. But once you defeat them, you can seize that power for yourself. After that, we can tag the ore, and our mining specialist will get to work. Soon, we encounter a few more deposits, each with a different dangerous encounter. I wonder if gold is a league thing. Lines, your miners will get to work collecting resources in real time. They might take a while, but will continue whether you are logged in or not. Okay, so that's a limit. By hiring more or better miners, and by upgrading yeah. the mining station back in King's March to equip them with advanced pickaxes. That's a limit to stop you from right. move speed Sometimes tapping these events in different maps. The We've also managed to collect some more gold too. 
We can now upgrade the town and build new structures. There's plenty of options, we just need to decide where to start. I think we'll start with the tavern, the beating heart of King's March. Yep, it tavern important. It can be upgraded instantly to improve the recruiter's prospects. And you can find various important NPCs relaxing here. Next, we'll upgrade our mining station. You can upgrade this to improve the efficiency of your miners. Ah uh, yes they are from New Zealand, the developers of the game. You will eventually need a smelter, where you can send your ore to turn into more valuable bars. Alright, this then seems pretty we straightforward. Have the where you can bring your magic, rare, or unique items to be added to a queue to be disenchanted over time. Oh that's cool. Disenchanting items sounds like a, an the interesting items mechanic. Will be broken down into thaumaturgic dust, a new resource used for crafting and shipping. We'll get more into that later. Thaumaturgic dust will be interesting. And of course, a town needs food. You could invest in farming, where you can select crops to grow and harvest. But don't worry, you won't be manually watering anything. Ah, the wonders of delegation. Like, With all these resources harvest. piling up, there will be excess that we can spend. Let's talk about rewards in Settlers of Kalgur. Eventually you can build a harbour, and establish shipping routes between a number of different Kalgurin and Kadori ports for trade. You'll be able to pile your acquired resources onto these ships and send them to a port of your choosing, where your traders will haggle for the best deals. <laughs> Each port will return specific rewards based on what you send them. I'm on a boat, all and types of it's going fast, have a preferred and... type that they'll currently pay more for. And that feels micromanagey. Because eventually you could be bringing in shipments like this. Huh. This. Oh. Even this. I prefer Today, the second one of those. To trade with Calgur. You'll notice that as we send more resources, this risk meter creeps up. Much like the dangers on the shores of Rayclast, there are dangers out at sea. Monsters, pirates, environmental hazards. You'll want to try keep your shipment safe. This character is BAMA. You can do if you have a look in the skill bar. That specialize in shipping. The more of them you add to the ship, the less risk there will be. Like this gentleman, who's famous for fending off even the most dangerous of pirates. Oh, I was hoping we get to be the pirate going, And we'll continue exploring Ray class while we wait for its return. This is the first Path of Exile League that experiments with true real-time mechanics. You can send out shipments, go and have lunch, and come back to your rewards. Many mechanics in the League work this way, so you'll always have some ongoing project or outcome to look forward to. That's going to be really interesting. When your shipment has returned, or met its demise, you'll get notified, and at your leisure you can return to the town to collect your rewards. Our shipment returned safely, so let's go see what we got. Ooh, they've sent us a unique item alongside our Ooh. rewards, perhaps hoping to secure us as a... Oh, that's a cool idea. Future. I don't know that it's all Aside that good, but shipping, it's cool. The Kalgurans are big on their technology. They have hired Isla, a familiar face from the Heist League. She is an engineer who the Kalgurans have employed for a very exciting purpose. You're not the only one who understands how profitable running maps can be. Once at endgame, Isla can help you build a series of Kalgurin modified map devices. You can then put a queue of maps into them. Oh, this is cool. If you've hired a few skilled Atlas runners, they will put themselves to work running those maps for you one after another. A what? Look, more delegation. Once again, you'll be notified when the rewards are ready to be collected. Okay, that's crazy. You can put lots of maps in the queue, so don't feel obliged to go back there all the time. Build your own bot. <laughs> be careful though. The difficulty of the map impacts the risk of your workers perishing. Oh, 95% chance for an Atlas Try Runner to, to be perma killed. Workers, or perhaps just ones you don't like. <laughs> the difficulty too. Sometimes it's better to just run it yourself. You'll see there are many benefits to having a whole ass town at your fingertips. That's crazy. Let's talk about crafting services. Yeah, legit bot. You should definitely consider building a runesmithing table. This is operated by Danik himself, using powerful Kalgurin. Evil line, yeah. Bots. 
he can engrave runic magic onto your weapons using runes. There are many rune types and combinations to choose from, and you can unlock new crafts that can be applied to your weapons as enchantments. Okay, what can chance? The intention here is to take powerful effects you would usually only find on unique items. Like this modifier, which you might recognize from Doom Fletcher's prison. Oh wow, that's cool. Danig can apply it to your two-hand maces. <laughs> there are over 100 different special crafting outcomes. Oh, that's awesome. From ones very easily applied to very difficult. And some will be really hard to get the, the specific can material be for. Through trade with Kalgur, or defeating powerful bosses. God, 100% increased the elemental damage benefits don't on We're also Piscators. A formerly overpowered crowd favorite, Recombination. Isla is trying to master this. She just needs you to help her with getting resources. <laughs> the system isn't as strong as it used to be, but it still allows you to combine two items together, hoping to get the best modifiers of each onto a single item. Uh, T1 life on that? Have a look at that Between T1 running life running a town, shipping, and exploring, you'll be collecting a lot of extra gold. It is now the primary resource for two huge new quality of life features that we are putting to test. Firstly, you can use gold to respec passive points. This, this is a would be good. from Path of Exile 2 that we've decided just makes sense to port back. The higher level you are, the more expensive it gets. Yeah, there's a really good change. And the next one is absolutely massive. A currency trade market. The Kalgurans have recruited Faustus, another NPC from the Heist League. He allows you to asynchronously buy and sell currency and most other stackable items with other players without the nuisance of ugh, price fixes and people who never respond. All you need to do is select what currency you want, That's... say what you have, and your ideal ratio. That's gonna be crazy. Kinda like a real life stock market. Faustus will make the trade happen for you, so long as there is someone selling on the other end for the same rate or less. Any gold involved in that? To blasting monsters while trusty Faustus does the dirty work, notifying you when your currency is ready for collection. All you need to do is pay him a small amount of gold for his time. Yeah, one of your currency exchange orders Cards and on the gold table, fee. This is an experiment to see if this type of asynchronous trading has a place in future Path of Exile releases. We're yep. very excited to see how it goes. I think it's good on currency for sure. Now, given that Faustus is an expert Scarab's in the other thing be good with it. shady deals, he also provides another service, offering items for gold. The items will Glennon. generate with random rarity, and on average the modifiers on them are better than normal. This can be a very nice way to get some targeted items during the campaign. For serious crafters, it can be a great starting point for making those elusive, specific in-game items. Which perhaps you could take to the runesmith afterwards. It's worth noting that you can invite Faustus to your hideout, where he will always be available for respecking, currency exchange, and black market items. That's good. Good have him in the hideout. Grows, it will attract more attention, good and bad. Sailors of Kalgur features three endgame bosses that will Yeah, life rolls are higher. That's definitely the case. A piece of the pie. They might capture and ransom your workers. Even your entire ships. Oh well. You have to make some tough decisions. Will you take them on or pay them off? One example of a boss is Sasan, the bandit lord. You won't stumble across this boss by accident. Instead, this unsavory character can come into your town at night and take your Atlas Runners hostage, holding them for ransom. Oh, that's hilarious. What happens next is up to you. Perhaps you'll refuse to negotiate with bandits, leading to a fight to defeat Sasan and rescue your workers. If you're not up for the heroics, you might simply pay the ransom in gold. Or perhaps these workers were especially disappointing, and you'll just leave them for dead in true Rayclass fashion. Wah, wah, wah. They knew what they were signing up for, right? Of course, the heroics might be worth it for other reasons. Yeah, here's These the drops. These bosses can drop new unique items. Ward. They're really In putting on a bunch of ward things. Of Kalgur is a very experimental league with new mechanics that will completely change how you play the core game. We've been sitting on a lot of these ideas for a while and can't wait to share them with you. But there's a lot more to this expansion. Pernux a mace. Such a cookie. Well... 
We've finally rebalanced the gladiator. It's Yay. been a long time coming. Gladiator's getting... Like before, there are passive skills that allow you to invest in bleeding and block. Bleeding you assist is aggravated. Skills, replacing some of the old ones. Oh, that's cool. Like this, War of Attrition, which is very handy for long Obviously sustained all damage with its moments. Further alongside oh. the gladiator theme, this new passive allows that's you cool. to combine different weapon types while dual wielding to get a variety of powerful bonuses. For example, holding a dagger will give you more critical strike chance. While holding a mace gives you more area of effect. That's interesting. Of course, you could just use Varanastra for all weapon type bonuses. Uh. And finally, we have a new notable which allows you to invest in the newly added retaliation skills. These are active skills which require you to meet a certain condition in order to use them. Oh, that's a cool Once idea, retaliation that skills that are active. You can unleash devastation on your foes. Not triggered, but ones we have are active. Eviscerate. Which requires you to have a shield. Or for those who like to dual wield, Sword Storm, which is great for obliterating bosses. <laughs> Here we have the Divine Retribution skill. This one has the condition requiring you to block. You can then oh, unleash a awesome. devastating spell, causing lightning bolts to strike the ground in an X shape around your target location, doing huge amounts of damage. This is really interesting as a in backup falling. Of fashion, there are many avenues to invest in these mechanics further on the passive tree and a new support gem. You are able to increase the leeway duration after meeting the condition, reduce the cooldowns, or just increase their damage. The world's your oyster. The Gladiator wasn't the only ascendancy class we've changed. As we develop Path of Exile systems, we often find ourselves reusing mechanics, increasing their depth, and allowing more avenues to invest into them. As such, the Raider Ascendancy class found itself lacking, with many of its passives commonly available elsewhere. We want our Ascendancy classes to always feel like they're pushing the boundaries, allowing you to change your character in ways that are meaningful and ideally unique. As a result, we've straight up removed the Raider, rest in peace, and we've added a new class in its place, the Warden. This class is largely inspired by its predecessor from the Affliction League, with a few changes. Okay. The Warden now focuses on elemental attacks, changing the behavior of Shock, enhancing Freeze, and replacing Ignite with Scorch. There's okay. also a skill that allows you to go ballistic with your elemental damage, periodically. The class also grants Barkskin, which is a skill right. that can be used to mitigate physical damage from hits. After taking a number of hits, it increases your evasion, making it a great defensive choice. Rip alcohol is Finally, plans. the last thing the Warden can specialize in is Tinctures. Ah, uh, Tinctures These are back. These are an alternative to flasks from the Affliction League. We're bringing them back with adjusted mechanics. Tinctures can be placed in your belt, replacing flasks. You can inherently only have one tincture active at a time, and it requires a melee weapon to use. While activated, they grant a powerful buff. They can drop as magic items, or be modified with currency to grant extra bonuses. Oh, so they can be rolled now. Here is a prismatic tincture. This one increases elemental damage 100%. by 100% while active. You'll notice it has two Mana extra burn. effects. One is that it applies Mana Burn every second. Mana Burn is a debuff that builds up while Tinctures are active that causes you to lose mana. Ooh. Losing more mana for the stack. Tinctures also have a cooldown. So once you have disabled one, no other Tincture can be enabled for a time. So they're burn These phases. These changes make Tincture use a more active and interesting choice than it was in Affliction. Yeah, it's just mana not a permanent buff. the cooldown can be modified through modifiers on the Tinctures, or on the passive skill tree. Players That's intriguing. Want to maximize their tincture uptime for sure. This is a burn phase Here thing. Here we have a couple other tinctures. The poison berry tincture is excellent for poison builds. The rose thorn tincture is the choice for those wanting to deal critical strikes. You might be wondering, with the removal of the raider, where has the frenzy charge investment gone? We've added a frenzy charge passive skill to the dead eye replacing the rupture passive skill oh 
Our on poor Rupture. Of Synergy classes, we have revisited a number of core mechanics. This time, taking pains to ensure easy access through the passive tree, skill gems, and simple items. We don't want all the powerful mechanics to be hidden behind layers of complexity. Let's just rapid fire through the key points. If you want more detail later, you can read the patch notes, which will be dropped after the live stream. Be sure to let us know what you think. And because those patch notes are going to be huge, so 30,000 words. A bit of a shock to the system. I expect it will take several days for the dust to settle on this one. Firstly, we've made some drastic alterations to melee skills. Let me just rip this band-aid off. Melee totem skill gems have been removed. Oh. We're trying to adopt a philosophy with melee going forward that unlike other builds, it will be far less oriented around set and forget gameplay. You will deal the damage yourself and you should be rewarded for doing so. To compensate, we have buffed the damage on almost every single melee skill. As the majority of this damage growth comes from gem levels, we have also made them cost more mana as they level, but it's nothing like the mana costs on spells. Here are some examples Ooh, of the damage and costs before and after. Heavy Strike has gone from dealing 313% attack damage at gem level 20 to a massive wow. 552 percent attack damage. Um, it's also worth noting it no longer knocks enemies back. Mana cost that is pain. From dealing 281 percent attack damage, oh, 664. To now 664 percent attack damage. At but it's lost level the flat fears. These are just two examples, but the majority of melee skills are now dealing approximately 75 percent more damage at level 20. Of course, with melee comes close proximity combat, so you need some good defensive options. Yeah, this will be the big thing. New base types with higher defensive values will now drop throughout the endgame. As you reach yellow, red, and purple maps, you can expect to find higher tier base types in each. Yeah. So for level example, 78 stuff. For example, Regalia and Hubris Circlet are no longer the best in slot items for energy shield. There are new base types that surpass them. Oh, level 84 Twilight Regalia. Changes, which we'll talk about soon, you can now get better items than ever before in these slots. To compensate, we have reduced the amount of flat evasion and armor from the Grace and Determination auras. Yep, so it's something overall, we knew. you're getting more defenses than before. On top of this, we have buffed life modifiers on magic and rare equipment. You can now get as high as 189 additional maximum life from a single modifier on body armors. Yeah, that's and huge. More on other slots too. Calm's heart's getting legacy changes reverted. Calm's heart has also finally yep. been restored to its former glory and once again grants plus 1000 to maximum life. Legacy Calm. I mentioned which quality. is not actually going to be all that good. Weapons and armors is being changed to apply multiplicatively. In other words, weapons with full quality will give 20% more physical damage and armor with full quality will have 20% more local defenses. For melee, this will mean a damage increase for almost all builds using physical damage attacks. And yeah. it will mean more evasion, armor, energy shield, and ward for all builds. Drop should be up in 20 minutes, Endurance Legendary Nightfall. no longer grant elemental resistances, but instead grant additional elemental damage reduction, making it multiplicative with resistances. You can now get 4% per charge alongside the existing 4% physical damage reduction. Oh. To compensate, we have made some changes to the Juggernaut and various unique items like Eternal Damnation. You can get more maximum resistances from the tree, specifically around the Marauder class start. These, of course, can stack with the new elemental mitigation from Endurance Charges. That's already on the tree somewhere else, Nomadic Teachings. It was... On top of this, Jewels Centuries. can now roll maximum elemental resistances as modifiers. Oh, that's cool. A dawn buff. Since we're making elemental mitigation more accessible, we've heavily reduced accessibility to physical damage taken as chaos or elemental damage. Those stats are still around, but you should not expect to be getting full conversion anymore. Ah, there we go. All block passives have been buffed, so you can now more easily achieve block cap from just the passive tree. Ooh, block passive the buffs. Keystone, versatile combatant has been improved to have less of a penalty to maximum block. A number of life leech passives have been buffed to generally allow for more acquisition of maximum leech rate for life. 
Val Pact has been reinstated to its former glory for instant life leech. Oh, what? But only for melee. We've reworked OG Legend Val Pact. Stone. Previously, this buff skill granted maim and blind, depending on the stance of our character. Now, while in sand stance, the skill simply provides damage mitigation. That's cool. Becoming more effective the closer you are to enemies. This can... While in blood stance, enemies will take Gotta more see the numbers on this. the closer you are to them. This skill will now greatly favor melee or close range gameplay. Given we're doing a Kalgurin League, Ward has also received a bit of attention. There are new uniques that grant Ward, and the base restoration of Ward is now faster. That's important. To compensate, Ulroth's resolve has been nerfed. <laughs> Ward loot builds will still be possible. Anyway, that was most of the purely defensive changes. Now let's look at some of the offensive and utility based ones. There are more and better ways to deal with mana as an attacker on the southern hemisphere of the passive tree. Oh. Wands, daggers, scepters, claws, and staves now have higher critical strike chance values than ever. Wands Ooh. can go as high as 10% without modifiers. Sandstorm Visage has been made rarer to compensate instead of reducing its power. For you Ooh. wand attackers, wands now have higher attack speed than ever. That's going to make Sanctum better. Low damage. Wand exclusive skills such as Power Siphon, Kinetic Bolt, and Kinetic Blast now have faster attack times. Impale passives have been revised and in general buffed. The buffs granted by Warcries are now simpler, but more significant, and more universal to builds. I'll have they to look, dig into these deeply later. Default. Banners have been reworked. Instead of having a reservation cost, they are now free. However, they don't grant a permanent buff. Banners now need to be placed for the effect to be active. Oh, Rip Defiance However, Banner. Once placed, they are far more powerful than before. Not nah, rip defines better still. there are new ways to prolong the effects, and more ways to invest in them than ever before. Yeah, poor never sink. Rage has been made more fundamental and discoverable. Rage is now multiplicative attack damage, but no longer inherently grants attack speed or movement speed. Oh, it has a new cap, and you can find many new passive clusters that allow you to invest into the mechanic. That's quite interesting. to make Rage more powerful as a baseline, and less gated behind the use of specific unique items and ascendancy classes. Berserk has been nerfed, just so you're aware. Yep. We have changed how bleed works too. You can now find aggravated bleed on the passive tree. When applied, all bleeds on the enemy will deal damage as if the enemy is moving. Aggravated bleed is a great idea. This is a really good one. The skill and snaring arrow no longer interacts with bleed, so no more will you have to apply bleeds and swap to a bow. You can now achieve the same result using aggravated bleed passives without the annoyance. That's an upgrade. Rupture from the Dead Eye has been turned into a support gem. We've added the new overexertion support gem, which highly favors slam builds. Oh yeah, now, it's big. it's time to look at a hot topic. Oh, the killing quantity! In the Settlers of Kalgar expansion, we are going to be removing item quantity bonuses from all character items. Oh, finally! Not affect existing items in standard leagues. Finally! Find is intended to be another access on your gear you can scale once you have achieved the power you want. With item quantity MF being gone. only available on unique items, this meant if you wanted to get the most out of it, you had to be playing a very specific build. We still want people to be able to invest into Magic Find, but now only through item rarity. Yep, yeah, that is a this huge improvement. This can be improvement. on a number of rare item slots, and by a much larger number of builds. Finally done it. What about Ventor's Gamble, you might ask? Here it is now. Oh, that's good. Reservation this efficiency. One of the biggest balance patches we've ever done. I can't promise that existing builds will all be safe. Even we aren't able to predict all the outcomes here, nor have we even gone into every single change, just the major ones. I don't know, man. Balance is hard. But the sheer <laughs> number of new, viable options is exciting, especially for melee. And we're determined to drag the game in a better direction. 
Yes. Be sure to read the patch notes after this. It's going to be a ruckus. Taking Magic Find Out is like, oh, most of it out is the best thing in a while. The in-game experience by introducing a new tier of maps and reworking scarabs. Ah, uh, something between we 16 and 17? To improve these systems. Is it or not? Oh, I exciting in-game content every league. 325 is no exception. Let's check out the myriad of changes coming in Settlers of Kalgur. First up, we are changing many scarabs. We won't go into too much detail here to avoid getting lost in the weeds, but here's a few new ones. Be sure to check out the patch notes after this for more detail. I, Divination Scarab is funny We've there. Also add an I missed the Carter map one. Device slot, which will be unlocked upon completing your first 10-way Maven encounter. This simply allows for more combinations of scarabs and maps, resulting in more difficulty and more rewards. This is on top of the existing additional slot that can be unlocked by completing your first Maven's Chisel of Proliferation? Map. There are now six map device slots in total. You might have seen our teaser, where we revealed we'll be adding new special encounters to the endgame. One such encounter is the Nameless Seer, lurking in tier 16 and 17 maps. This NPC will give you a selection of unique items, and you can pick one for free. In tier 16 maps, he now has an additional feature, where you can scry a map. This allows you to swap the divination card drops of the current map with another map on your atlas. Just one caveat, you cannot have the same map be in multiple swaps at the same time. If you want to undo your choice, you can use a scouring orb on either map on your atlas. We've also made some updates That's to cool. a couple of leagues. Blight has been updated with some Atlas passive skill changes. Oh, rip extractors. And double anointed amulets can now drop in Blight Ravage maps. Oh, that's cool. We've also introduced a new type of oil that can only drop from Blighted and Blight Ravage maps. Yeah, that's cool. Ritual has also been updated. You can now find one new and many reworked base types, hmm. new unique items. Let's go through there. Corpses you can use to raise a spectres. Oh yeah. And occasionally a fragment, granting access to the King in the Mist's boss fight from the Affliction League. That may yeah, they're he making it as a unique map. Unique items that were familiar from the league. Does that mean they're being Not removed from the was taken. core drop pool? Or? Is now that which was taken away. However, he now drops a different modular jewel that you might recognize from the Necropolis League. Ah, yeah. It's called... It's not Pact anymore. In tier 16 anymore. and tier 17 maps, you can now encounter the Wildwood, also from the Affliction League. In case you missed it, the Wildwood is a mysterious forest fraught with danger. In the darkness, you will find magical wisps yearning for freedom. Upon releasing them, they will empower the monsters in your map, promising more danger, but more rewards. You may also find random sentinels I thought this would be the case. The start of your maps, from the Sentinel League. They work in a similar way to before. They aren't items, but you can click on them, and then they can be activated in that area at any time of your choosing. That's awesome. That is an Upon awesome way. they will way. buff monsters around you, increasing their difficulty and rewards. And here's one for those who like to live dangerously. You may occasionally find a reflective mist from the Calandra League. Oh yeah. It has two outcomes. It could drop a jewelry item with randomly enhanced or inverted modifier values. That's cool. Or RNG mist is back. It can give back. a reflecting mist item, which can be used on an existing piece of jewelry to perform the same action at a time of your choosing. Good luck. Wow, There's many that's, other small changes to League that's going to be huge. The Calandra Mist is going to be enormous. Waves of the simulacrum uh, rebalancing is that going to work on the of finding unique Simplex and Focused Amulets? Focused more so? We're also adding some of the beasts from Einhar's memory of Harvest Beasts to the core pool. Oh, that's this interesting. The Black Morrigan. In other news, we've added a set of new chisel types, which can be applied to your maps to get different bonuses. While the cartographer's chisel still increases item quantity, there are new ones that now increase rarity, pack size, increased chance for currency items, oh, wow. divination cards, and scarabs. It's also worth mentioning that chisels now apply 20% quality per chisel to white maps, 10% to yellow maps, 
and 5% to red maps and higher. Unique maps still require the full 20 chisels. Also, only one type of chisel can be applied to a map at a time. Pack size ones will be interesting. During 324, we made a change to tier 17 maps that allowed them to be rerolled with chaos orbs. We are now expanding the currency types that can be used on them to also include currencies like chisels and Val orbs. Ultimately, the only restriction tier 17 maps now have is that explicit modifiers cannot be removed from them. Yes. We have also revised Can't the difficulty them. of these maps, as they didn't quite hit the mark. The monsters in them now have substantially less life, and deal less damage, meaning tier 17 maps now better fit into the progression between pinnacle and uber pinnacle content. Less damage good, Lastly, less life. We've adjusted the drop Maybe rate not. of Valdo's puzzle boxes. Previously, we were adapting its drop rate based on the possible outcomes selected by supporters. So many supporters really wanted mage bloods, <laughs> so the box was hardly dropping. Thus, we have drastically increased the drop rate of the box, but reduced the probability of getting chase unique items from it, like mage blood. Overall, we have taken so, care not to reduce the number of mage bloods total in the economy. More filler, less we killer. It was better to have more tickets well, for fun rather than barely same number any of killer. boxes in the league. We've been hard at work improving the path of exile experience on consoles. Ah, uh, Solmorphic, yeah, you'll still be rolling 17s, otherwise you'll end up with Divine Orbs in 250 C. On the, horizon, the game now takes full advantage of the console hardware. Loading times have been reduced even further, pop-in has been reduced, and textures won't start unloading in heavy scenes. So, console peasants are getting looked after, more, which is good. Overall visual fidelity has Sorry, been I had to make the, for all have to new make generation the consoles. Path of Exile now uses the highest available resolution textures and water effects. We've installed a new upscaling algorithm that improves the crispness of dynamic resolution, with an additional anti-aliasing pass on top of that. With these upgrades, we also support variable refresh rate TVs and monitors on PlayStation 5 and on all Xbox consoles. In the options, players can now choose which aspect of visual fidelity they want to focus on. Resolution, image quality, or target frame rate. That seems like good things. In 324, things. we added some new encounters and secrets to the campaign. In Settlers of Kalgur, we're adding even more. Drops should be we're active in six minutes here, if you've been here from the start. But keep an eye out for anything unfamiliar on your adventures. Who knows what you'll find? I mean, I know, but still. <laughs> Who knows what you find? I did. underneath the refinery, guarded by powerful robots. I wonder what's been hidden away here. Sentinel How do I unlock this mysterious door? What riches must lay inside? Blighted growths <coughs> appeared in the gardens and sewers of San. A vault containing riches can be found in the reliquary. As you might have seen in our teasers, there's a slew of quality of life features we've been working on. Here's a quick summary. You'll no longer need to interact with waypoints to unlock them. You can just walk by and they'll activate automatically. That works really well in last When Epoch. using keyboard and mouse, you'll be able to pick up items from further away. We're adding static life bars to some bosses. Not all bosses will have them just yet, but we'll be adding more over time. I want to see how that works with some of them. You can now see which divination cards are like by hovering over them on your atlas. When you die, you can now resurrect without having to reactivate all your reservation effects, like auras and heralds. <laughs> You can start harvest encounters with just a single action. That harvesting's gonna feel the so good. The amount of quality provided by currency items like whetstones is now based on the item level, rather than item rarity. Those currencies now apply a 20% quality to very low level items, with that amount reducing as the item level increases. Next up, we're going to be talking about our new league supporter packs. Today, we're launching two new series of supporter packs, the Paladin and Penance packs. Ooh. Each tier contains the pack's full face value and points, alongside several exclusive microtransactions. See if there's any good hideouts this time. These packs are only available for the duration of the Settlers of Kalgur League, and will leave the store forever when it ends. As always, the microtransactions in these packs are purely cosmetic, and do not affect your character's power or progression in any way. The Paladin series of supporter packs contains six exclusive microtransactions. 
adorn your weapon or shield with the paladin weapon effect. Okay, that's ridiculous. Make a show of leveling up with the harpy flyover level up effect. <laughs> that is peak me. The divine paladin armor set will periodically cause slain enemies to be consecrated and laid to rest. This set also comes with a matching back attachment. Both the helmet and back attachment have options to display the radiant glow or not. You pick. The Divine Judgment finisher effect locks onto unique enemies before obliterating them with a laser from the heavens. Okay, where's the most unique enemies you're gonna get in one zone? Critical hits resonate across Rayclast with the Cleric's Bell back attachment. Invite your friends to spend a day at the races in the Vasteri Racecourse hideout. Oh god. Add rowers to the track to race them against each other. Oh yeah, that's, that's just me. Or you can just spectate from the sidelines. That is... The Penance Pack series also has six exclusive microtransactions. With the Penance Back attachment equipped, a repentant soul is chained to your back. Oh my god, that is crazy over, over the top Ouch. ridiculous. Place none other than the Trial Master in your hideout and have him comment on your chaos... And Val crafting attempts. <laughs> Your luck is over, fool. <laughs> he even keeps a record of how many Chaos and Val orbs you've used in your hideout during the league or across all leagues. Oh, that's going to be hilarious. Trollmaster, yeah. your armor the more life you lose when wearing the Acolyte's Penance armor set. The Zealot's Madness portal effect fragments as you near it. The cauldron map device boils maps, fragments, and scarabs placed into it, keeping a tally of how many have been thrown into the pot in the current league or across all leagues. The exiled squire pets follow in your footsteps, hyping you up for battles no for you, and laughing when you die, providing pessimistic commentary. Or voicing their disdain for you to bring you down a pig. About time you kick the bucket. <laughs> These packs are now available for purchase on both PC and console, and will remain so during Path of Exile, Settlers of Kalgur. Meanwhile, the Solar and Eldritch packs leave the store forever at the launch of Settlers of Kalgur League. So now's your last chance to purchase them. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. Ah, they have a we week have one more overlap now. Before getting into the Q &A. We are soon going to be running a small closed beta test for Path of Exile 2. Ooh. We have been taking signups for the Path of Exile 2 beta tests over at pathofexile2.com. We will only be selecting a very limited number of people for this first test, but if you want to make sure that you are considered, then head over to the website and register your email address now. I actually think I want to be in the second test there, not We're the first. We're just about to start the Q and A with Ziggy D. Afterwards, we'll post Path of Exile Settlers of Kalgur's full patch notes. With release at the end of next week, our community team will be posting crucial information you'll need for Settlers of Kalgur's release. Keep an eye on the news. On release weekend, we expect to launch the new mystery box and this season's Kerax Vault Pass. Thanks for joining us today and checking out our latest developments. We're looking forward to building our towns alongside you trying new builds, slaying monsters, and exploring new in-game strategies. Oh yeah, the Path of Exile website always we'll crashes at this point. Shortly, so please get your questions ready. Well, that looks like actually I'm able to... Oh no, there it is. It's the... Um, pathofexile.com forward slash settlers is up. So I'm able to get to that. Uh, it'll be of limited information there. It's not really an auction house per se. Like people are asking what pip, what we expect um, Krilson's attitude will be to the uh, to the currency exchange. It's quite different. Oh, Ziggy needs a volume up. Ziggy really needs plus volume. 
some real whiplash. <laughs> you guys just kind of got in a room together and set up the whiteboard and put everything on there, huh? Um, it, like, oh, end of the day, really, it's we have this much time. We have so Ziggy people specifically. who can do what we do and we just keep going till the end. Like, it doesn't stop here. Like, we've still got one more week, right? Like, <laughs> there are still changes that can be made, so we're going to keep making them. So I'm going to ask yeah, whether combat minion massive. totem builds are dead. Yeah, Jonathan was saying to me the other day, it's, oh, I don't think it's that big. And I was like, wait, that was crazy. It just kept going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess uh, from my perspective, I kind of look at this and I'm like, okay, um, when I compare it to the amount of stuff that's been created for POE2, it seems small, but yeah, when you actually think about it, it's like, yeah, it's... it's, it's Alright, I'm just asking that there. Fair enough, yeah, I'm making a whole new game there, but <laughs> we are only talking about Path of Exile 1 sure, today, sure. and you gave it plenty of space to shine, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got returning leagues, we've got a whole new league with a lot going on, oh. and some very experimental content as well. And uh, with all of that, you did tease us once again with the concept and potential of a boat league and yet you sailed away and left us stranded on the dock once more this is a boat but, league uh, what gives this is a boat league um, it's very much not intentional um i suspect and honestly I, I i i honestly reckon if someone actually got a boat league uh they wouldn't end up actually liking it but we can only really prove that by testing it and so maybe one day we'll get there but until then, you're just going to have... There'll be boats, but you won't be on the boats. Um, I'm on plus 26 on the volume on Twitch at the moment. Any higher... All right, all right. We'll I don't think it will work. That. Just out of reach for us. <laughs> Looking so, for a solution. Um, does this feel like to you guys, and I've seen this theory floated around a lot, of a bit of a, a, a send-off league for Path of Exile 1, in a sense that we've got the Path of Exile 2 beta kind of just around the corner now? Um, I guess I don't really see it that way, because, you know, we intend to keep on making POE 1 leagues... Um, you know, we're going to, uh, like, you know, it, it, it really is just, you know, the standard lead cycle, you know. Um, I have just the, done that, definitely. It is hard as a studio making two things at the same time, um, uh, for sure. But, uh, you know, that's something we just have to sort of get used to. And, yeah, we certainly wouldn't want people to think, oh, yeah, this is like the last POE 1 league or something like that, right? It's definitely not the case. Um, you know, like, we're going to be continuing to make POE 1 leagues and, you know, that, like, you, you should expect to see things of, of this size in the future as well. So, Settlers of Kalgur, it adds gold, and I think we should touch on that and the whole mm. currency exchange thing first. Yeah, gold's going to be huge. Um, so, it's obviously using gold for its features, its progression with the mm. workers and upgrading buildings and things like that. But you're also experimenting with some core game features like respects and a trading mm. fee for the new currency exchange. Huge announcement there. Um, so, those that have been following Puff Exile 2 will be familiar with the concept of gold and mm -hmm. why that's a thing that you might add to the game now after it's not had gold for so long. But could you explain what is the idea behind gold? Um, so really, I mean, gold is something that POE1 obviously never had. Um, I think it's something that, in retrospect, I think that didn't help the game. Um, the important thing with gold is that it's not used as a uh, trading uh, currency. Like, gold needs to be something that uh, is only, uh, like, it's bound to the individual character. And that means what it effectively is, is a measure of how much actual play um, that, that you've done, right? Since you can't trade mm. between players. Uh, and that means that it's actually um, ends up being a perfect currency to be able to do something like gate uh, the player to player trade uh, in a, in a, in with um, an automated system like that because, um, you know, in order to be able to. Um, you can't just sit there flipping all day. You actually have to be able to uh, go and play the game as well. And that sort of prevents the kind of crazy inflation that you can get with um, other automated uh, you know, auction house type systems that you see in other action RPGs. Or at least that's the theory. But the thing is, is that uh, we have to test this stuff. And this is the reason why we're really keen to do it as a league mechanic uh, to start with, to sort of see, like, you know, uh, is it going to work? Uh, is the economy going to go weird? Uh, you know, what's going to happen? That way we can kind of dip our toe in, see what happens, uh, you know, test this. Because, you know, the thing with this trade stuff is you really cannot test it uh you know like in the office right like you it is simply we don't you know we don't have thousands and thousands of people that you would need to be able to actually uh see how that goes so on some level you know we kind of need our community to see what happens with the economy to be able to test something like that and that's just you know one of the few areas where that's like that um so um yeah what we're hoping is is that everything just goes fine it's just way better uh we can then immediately put it in uh you know the the core game uh, as soon as we've uh, done with that um ideally without too many tweaks uh and then um that that'll be good but uh, yeah we really have to see uh, by putting it in a league first yeah the person, thing person i really like about this work. gold idea is that it allows you to effectively be converting this idea of friction in the user experience of like physically trading mm -hmm. into 
actual gameplay right right the stuff for we sure. like doing for right. sure for sure um yeah i mean that then that, that that really helps and as, as i said like the system um you know like uh it'll, it'll be also really nice to be able to see how it works before we ship poe2 as well um like it's really nice to you know to be able to do that and um we sh we may be able to go further than this um like uh the intention is to go further and uh you know so this is effectively our first uh, uh, the first part um but uh yeah we'll, we'll see how it goes i don't know if you what there is also one thing about this and just because it maybe wasn't clear is that Despite being in the league, gold is just dropping as items from killing everything in the game. Yeah. Um, you kill monsters, you play the game, you're getting gold. Uh, you don't actually need to engage with the league to uh, use the gambling, use the respecking, or use the currency exchange. So despite being in the league and the gold is only dropping in the league due to us being more experimental with it and seeing how it goes, like if you don't like the league's mechanics, it's not like those are gated behind that as well. I just wanted to clarify that just in case anyone was right. like, you know, thinking, yeah. oh, so I don't want to... you know, you can just invite Faustus into your hideout and then just use him for that. And, you know, and, and that, that can be the only thing you do if you want. So all that currency exchange, the item gambling and stuff is all like fully accessible, even if you basically don't do any of the other stuff. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Which yeah. means, of course, if it is successful, it can port into the core game very, very yeah. easily. You just turn gold drops on, put mm. Faustus in done i mean there's a little bit more than that but you know that's <laughs> generally the summary of it and it doesn't have to come with the whole kind of city building element and right, right. all of that that comes alongside it yeah yeah so do you see it being something that's likely to stick around then and that's kind of the I intention mean, that yeah. is certainly our intention it's yeah. just that we want to be able to still have an out if uh, yeah that makes a lot of sense wrong. they want um, to way to back like out of it to change some stuff so uh, yeah like it is certainly our intention to keep it in if we can it's a nice little safety net of being part of the league for the for you then <laughs> yeah. safety rip Prob probabilities case. are high and i suspect also no one's going to let us remove it right so like, let's be <laughs> let's be realistic here yeah. um, <laughs> it would have to go horrifically wrong for everyone right. to be like okay you were right <laughs> don't yeah. do this yeah yeah <laughs> i can't imagine <laughs> Yeah. Um, so there's also this gambling thing with Faustus where you can mm -hmm. buy these un id items and actually look pretty powerful from what I saw. Like the items it was producing were like those really well rolled rares. Um, what's the idea behind the gold based gambles? Why is that a part of it? Um, ultimately, it. it's a sink. You don't want gold to just be accumulated forever. Yeah. Um, but the awesome thing is that it's a way to target specific base types. Um, and that's ultimately the luxury. So obviously, when you're going through the campaign and you're looking for specific targeted gear upgrades, very, very useful for that. Mm. Um, and it, as you get higher and higher uh, level, I guess as you upgrade your tavern, I guess technically sort of, but also as you just get higher level, it upgrades um, uh, the modifier tier rating, which was a, a term some people might not know, but it was used in Necropolis League, which effectively cuts off the bottom X oh, uh, tiers black screen, you can eh? generate. So, so the items by end game will be generating with a minimum tier higher than something and thus... Sorry they are that. pretty powerful items. It's, it's worth mentioning that like there's quite a lot of changes in this um, league that around the idea of how can we make rares more viable um, than, than uniques. Like quite a lot of the balance things are, are actually around this idea, and that extends to things like you know adding more base types higher up and so on to make it so that there's um, you know like that they can compete with uh, with uh, uniques more. You know the higher tier life mods, um, all of this sort of stuff, and the gambling and the ability to get rares this way as well is like once again another part of this. So we really want to try and make it so that um, and. and and the reason why that's important is because if um you know like mark said in the in in, in the video with um the uh the, the item quants problem as well mm. it was that was one of the other things that sort of meant that you had to be tied to specific uniques get like for sure um and so yeah we just wanted to remove more of the barriers that um allow people to just be able to use rares um and then th that opens up for more different build types um you know like if, if, if less uniques become mandatory um so um that's you know th as i said it's just another one of those things that kind of affects that so with that being an attractive expenditure of gold, um, how much do you want players to be able to trade currency freely between each other with this very fast and asynchronous currency exchange system? Like, yeah, um, obviously, gold is your ability to control how much of that's happening in terms of volume. How liquid do you want any currency orb drop to be? Um, so for currency uh, in particular, we're fine with like a very high amount of liquidity. Um, we're, later on, um, you know, we've, we've talked about how in POE2 we're going to be doing um, uh, uh, asynchronous trade for for items as well. For oh, that, we, we, we need to have a bit less liquidity, and the reason why is because currency um, can sync itself, um, like is its own currency sync. So effectively, that means that um, uh, we don't have to like worry too much about fast trade there. Like the the relative value should establish, and everything should be okay, and I, it, it shouldn't it shouldn't matter too much about that being highly liquid. That said, there is still a gold price to do it because we don't want people literally just sitting there, uh, just doing only that forever. But um, you know that this is something that. Uh, uh, 
we don't want to it certainly should feel like um if you're just playing regularly that you can get all the currency you want from the trade market and you don't feel restricted by the gold price like it's not intended to be something that a normal player would run into assuming that they're just doing normal things with currency of course uh it is still meant to have high friction early game Oh, you, yeah, you, you don't want you mm. don't want to demean the leveling experience and the new yeah, play yeah, experience yeah, yeah, where yeah. they think the right yeah. answer is to go and just trade all of the stuff right. away. You want it to be that you're more finding items there right, and getting right. things organically, and right. only later in the game does yeah. it become. So the gold prices yeah. late in the game are like not a roadblock at all. The gold prices early in the game uh, are a roadblock. So that's kind of preventing that yeah early game kind of issue. Yeah, you because you want an alk when you're leveling your first character. You do to feel like an alk. Yeah, exactly. Not, exactly. Not to be like, yeah, oh, this should be, be chaos. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. But that honestly sounds like a relief that you're not worried about that sort of thing too much because right. That uh, is, that kind of incentive to hoard currency and not spend it all right, while right. leveling is always a bit of a bummer. Right, right. Yeah. Um, this feels like a bit of a momentous occasion. The uh, <laughs> the currency exchange. This um, because you've had this whole the things system that need of to like be added the to currency it. that sinks itself and stuff for so long, mm -hmm. and now finally blending that with gold and this system. Huge. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, it's also just a mental block as well, right? Because it's like, how yeah. can you add gold to POE? It's like, you know, it's just one of those. <laughs> it's one of those things. So uh, this yeah. um, this was one of the key components that was part of like designing the league. It was largely like how we started from that point. Because again, when you ask most people in the office, most players in the office and outside the office, what is the like number one problem with Path of Exile? And then what experience gives yes, them the most negative reaction Actually, it's, so. it's often trade yeah yep. <laughs> and especially and i um I, I i can't remember if it was last league or the league before and um i was trying to buy what was i trying to buy on the currency it was like one of the catalysts i was like okay, i just need a catalyst up my rings and amy oh man and you know you get a hundred people on the trade website yep. i went i just went <laughs> spam spam spam, spam, uh -huh. spam. i got a hundred people I guess how many replied zero yeah. Zero people replied to me. Now, I, I know, I know you're meant to scroll down because all the top people are just bad actors. And then it's like, okay, I actually got to a point where I was like, okay, genuinely no one replied. And then like other, and I, so I was just like on Discord, I was like, yo, I need some help buying these things. Can everyone just start messaging everyone trying to get these catalysts for me, please? And so, yes, I, it is actually one of, or was hopefully to be no longer soon the most frustrating experience you yeah. can have as a player at Endgame. It was something else. And uh, yes, I, it, so when we're designing the league we're like okay if this is the number one problem how are we not taking some sort of stride to solve it and so that's kind of where well it, it almost acted as the basis of how can we build something around that because then it's gold and then it's like what can you do with gold and then we just extrapolated from there into all kinds of things so yeah, oh it, god it, Clarell, you correct me it, up that i like that a lot of what we're developing now GGG, is coming from a how can we solve actual problems first as opposed to just well as well as but n as opposed to entirely like how can we add cool content so how can we do both these things at the same time and i feel like a lot of what's going on in this patch is with that philosophy as opposed to just yeah. here's cool stuff it's solving problems and adding cool stuff at the same time I love this trend of you just doing the thing we do and being like, this is awful, just like you said. <laughs> oh, it, like, actually awful. <laughs> like, I tried to, vo in that live stream, I tried to voice my disgust at the, when I said, talked about price fixes and people who don't reply. But like, if you had got my actual emotional reaction, I would have probably been screaming a little bit and raging. <laughs> like, <laughs> more. Yeah, most infuriating thing. And it was the, one of the things that ground me down last league that stopped me from enjoying as much as I could, so... It's uh, it's huge and it really pairs in with like the scarab changes and stuff recently as well. So yeah. um, we'll talk more about that later. But uh, the currency exchange includes fragments, scarabs, yeah, yeah. anything that's oh, it includes scarabs. Exactly, that's the right. word. So yeah, anything, any like so obviously it uh, can't work with things like uh, maps and so on because they don't, you know, they're, yep. they're not all identical. Yep. Um, it's just anything that uh, where yeah, they're exactly the same. No, no one item can be distinguished from another. It has to be out of stack. Um, yep. is ultimately the goal. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so yes, that, this up. use the existing trade system for the things that can't. So that's like beasts. Beasts can't be. Maps can't be. Um, incubators can't be because they have a level. You know things like that. They can't because they cannot. They cannot guaranteed stack on a single thing. And it's not like you want to. You don't want to have a tab of incubators where it's got every incubator level one, every incubator level two, every incubator level three. I thought they should know, simplify incubators for a while. List. So. Um, like things like that you'll be trading ones, using the existing level way 75, and level all 68. stackables you'll trade 
and you just if you kill level eighty monsters, you get a chance at seventy five, chance at six, yes, at eighty six. Yep. Wow. Okay. yep. Wow. Anything that is stackable, uh, that. There's just so many of them, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Anything Surprise. that's stackable and has no other uh, yeah. variable. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were telling me that like it will list like the 13 most common trade pairs for each item. And yeah, so this is the thing because um, with this trade system, you can technically trade any item for any other item, you know, because yeah. that's, that's how POE works. <laughs> um, so we have to have some kind of way to basically tell players, um, okay, so here's the actual thing that like people are trading with this with. Um, so effectively, sense, yeah. um, unless you're the first person ever to trade uh, something, new players um, then it's going to say like, you know, here's, here's the most popular uh, several things that, you know, people, people trade for the saw, uh, tra trade for the sim. Um, it also shows you like you know the, um, the 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 market price obviously for you know what's been going on as well as uh uh, okay, so we're getting into stock market terms here. But the, the first, uh, the first five, uh, f first five price levels in the order book. Uh, so that's to say, you can see like uh, <laughs> yes. what the uh, what the, uh, the, the how many things are available to a few a few different price levels, um, and uh, that will allow you to um, uh, you know to to, to uh, do your trade. So I suppose some people will be uh, learning more about the stock market uh, pretty soon. <laughs> <Yep>. uh, <laughs> have, uh, you know, I, I guess we'll have uh, you know. Uh, I mean, some people are going to love that. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. Um, but uh, one, one thing, just to, just to make sure people understand, is like this is still player to player trade. Like you, you can't, you don't know who you're trading with, and like it will be instant if there's like liquidity in the market. Um, but uh, it is coming from someone else's actual stash. Yeah, it's um, a physical trade. Still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, just just that, that's worth bearing. Because some people, when they see the, um, the the video, they're like, oh, okay, it's just like you're trading with the system somehow. Or there's some kind of like market uh, like uh, thing where the system like determines a price or something. No, it's not that. You're actually buying off someone else. So any any trade you do where you've got like you know I'm I'm buying this, I'm selling this. Someone else has entered a trade on the other end of I'm selling this, I'm buying that. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah and that's the prices that. are also by players. It's yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Setting that's that stuff. exactly. It, there's a few other things I'll just mention as well that are adjacent or, you know, that got implemented as a result. So, like, uh, when you're adding them, it will pull from your stashes. It won't... You don't so have good. to move everything to your inventory first oh, and then great. do it. So you can... Because people, people might be wondering, okay, if I want to sell or, you know, trade away 5,000 chaos or some number of chaos that won't fit in their inventory, um, as long as it isn't their stash, you can do it. Yeah. Um, you can do 65,000 of a given currency <laughs> in a single uh, ex wow. exchange. Um, if you have that much, um, what else? Uh, you can. There are shortcut binds for moving all of them to your inventory, so you don't have to like control click spam a thousand times. It is, I believe, so control good. right click will move all of them to your inventory. And also as a bonus, we have implemented that to and from the stash with all stackables as well. Oh, so yes. you can control yeah. right click on a thing in your inventory to move all of that type Thank into you your stash, hands. and and vice versa. My my thirty five year old hands are falling <laughs> apart. Thank you. Yeah, same. <laughs> so you're talking about being thirty five as though he's changed. Very good. Get off my lawn. So if this is successful, do you see it being something you expand to being able to do other things that aren't homogenous, so maps and gear and things like that? Um, well, that's certainly the plan for POE two, and it yeah. would be nice to be able to do that in POE one as well. We just have to work out how it can um, work exactly. So, well, I I believe that we will get there, um, and uh, oh, that's yeah. certainly our intention. Um, so so uh, you know we'll 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 see we'll see how it goes, but yeah, that's the intention. Like this this part, um, a leak puma is being like tested in solving leak first. quite a large amount of the problem because I think this is the, the currency is what you're doing all the time. Um, you know you need you need that to be easy. So like we figured that um, you know we needed to, uh, to to do to to get this part out there first. Yeah, historic for the first time ever. That's <laughs> been the yes. This, we want to do this unless something goes wrong. Yeah. 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 That's Amazing. the plan. It's perfect. They want it right, to go well, core, but they leave the currency exchange they're not promising there. It. Thanks for the extra insight on that. Did you have to resist the temptation to go like full candle graphs and uh, all I that mean, stuff? I'm sure I, I at some point. To. I'm sure at some point the uh, you know the, the, the <laughs> this will start to happen. We'll have like <laughs> yeah. you know community uh, like websites of like oh, all yeah, the, the technical plugins. indicators and like all yeah. that sort of stuff. Mad yeah, money, yeah, yeah, YouTube yeah. channel, <laughs> yeah. It is worth noting also on the currency exchange, I will be posting a video on Monday just for anyone who's unclear, or Monday or Tuesday, New Zealand, uh, just in, for um, anyone who's unclear on how it works. It's a little bit of a like currency market for dummies kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just goes over the basics and hopefully, you know, yeah. work, it's room for either feedback on UX if they see anything that wants to change or of course There's just gonna be better so understanding much of how to use it. This. It is very easy for someone to get very scared looking at it and go, I, I don't quite know what to do. But it is pretty straightforward. You, you just, you know, it can be 
easy to f- fear yourself out of buying or selling stuff because you you may be like i don't know what the best ratio is and it it provides all that stuff for you it's pretty straightforward but still so hence putting out a video to try and help people out you know in terms of understanding when they're going into it and we'll see how it goes mate i'm definitely signing up for your trading tips newsletter (laughs) (laughs) can't wait my trading tips currently is like spam everyone and get really angry so hopefully it's not all of that afterwards that's that's all it's gonna be the biggest change in a long time Uh, excellent so returning to settlers of kalgoor how did this very cozy concept for the settlers come about of this town building thing well i know what you pitched me on first was pal world league yeah yeah that was the first i, 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 got. I remember your initial your initial <laughs> response i think was what hold on that could mean many things does that mean we have guns yeah so it kind of like uh, it moved around a little bit from the initial pitch i know like cause, i mean we the first pitch was definitely too complicated with all sorts of like it had like way more stages of different products and all sorts of stuff going on like it, it was pretty crazy and so it kind of uh-huh. got it got put into a Eve. more sort of like oh. poe applicable what on earth like happened way there? um but uh, yeah that was the initial one at least but i don't know if you've got a uh, yeah it, it was coming from again the philosophy of wanting to solve problems so i wrote down I all we the just problems it's really and I was like, weird. how can we solve all these problems? And then it was like, well, if you had an NPC for each, and then it's like an NPC, well, that would mean a town for each. And then you want to make some game mechanic out of it, so you have some level of automation and stuff like that. And yes, there was a very, very, very long list at the start. Um, <laughs> and we ended up just refining it down to like, here are the actual important things that we can do and want to do. Um, but yeah, and then obviously how oh, the rest of it came about, the coziness and using Calgur and all of that stuff, ultimately just comes from the fact nah, that it's like, well, crangled again. one thing that takes a long time in development, like a very, very long time is art, right? It takes a long time. You've got your concept, you've got research, you've got, you know, all the way through to the actual modeling and everything it just it is a long process so all of a sudden when you can be Trying like to fix this yet yeah. well okay. we've got all this art from this other game here andy yeah yeah so Cal, the, the, the we actually thought it would be pretty cool basically because um uh, in act four and poe2 uh the you know we've got this whole thing of like the calgar and set, making a settlement on rayclast we thought it'd be just cool to sort of tell that story of how that happened uh yes. and, you know, we've got because i had uh, it would be quite nice to do image editing um, software so, uh, as well yeah, that's kind of ended up how that being but the, the that thing that problem. we got there came after the that, initial concept was we want to make some kind of settlement town thing and we're like okay what can we do with that and then we realized hey you know like we've already got the sort of storyline we've got going on here in poe2 we might as well uh you know connect it up and kind of have like an interesting thing there it definitely feels like a increasing the scope of the world a little bit because this this is a distant civilization 1500 kilometers away mm-hmm. also on the map and that those are people who have not been involved in the storyline sure. of poe1 sure. so this is a new expansion there sure world-wise. i mean they've already they, they always sort of technically existed like there was law yeah. written for that when um we did um the, you know the, the previous expansion with them um the expedition but um the uh yeah like in poe2 we kind of expanded on that because we had that location and everything and so um you know we uh, that just meant that you know yeah we've, we've got the stuff and we, it, 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 i think it adds a little bit to the flavor to have uh, you know to to, to to do that sort of stuff but yeah it is very very rare for us to go to talk about or go outside of rayclast ever mm-hmm. Yeah, there's um, presumably so a whole world out there, but we've there is. Really heard too much I, about you're, it. Well, you're, it's not just like here's a planet of water with this like tiny little <laughs> island, right? Like the Star Wars planets, you know. <laughs> so all just one thing. What, what we're saying is boat league is possible. You know, it's not like <laughs> yeah, it's just land to everywhere. Go, confirmed, it, damn, right? that was a good. I could have used that as an excuse for no boat league was to have it. <laughs> no, there's, there's no, no aside from this little bit of water, yeah, there's just look, land. Yeah. The rest of it, yeah. Yeah, I've already dropped the ball on that one. There's a few boats already. Damn it, there's lots of water. Minions running maps is going to be crazy. All right. Yeah. So this idea of um, this is a very much like a, a meta progression league, right? Like, uh, and that's not a new concept. The idea of like a league having its some its own sort of progression outside of your personal mm-hmm. character progression, but this is definitely um the main flavor here it feels is this something you specifically wanted to give players like a greater context for their things that they're doing so they're, they're that happens their atlas, but they're getting golden resources and progressing this whole other thing i mean it, for sure but i will mention that like i guess it wasn't dwelled on a lot um in the uh in, in the video but like the the resource gathering thing like those encounters are encounters that you're going to be uh encountering through the world and they have their own mechanics and stuff which obviously mark can talk more about so like that is definitely like content there as well it's just that like it's kind of not uh as easy to show like we kind of needed to show about all this sort of town stuff um but uh, yeah those th- those encounters are, will hopefully be very enjoyable as well and that's kind of like 
I, I suppose you could call that the meat and potatoes in some sense of the league because um, the uh, you know that, that's what you'll be doing every area you're going to find these things um, and uh, have to do those encounters. So. Yeah. So what's that content like in um, then? Yeah. So you got one in every area. Um, well, aside from some, like twi- you know Tidal Island and some of that stuff, um, you got one in every area minimum. So it's one to two, um, and there are five different outcomes, kind of six, but we'll go over the five of and uh, so oh. you can find different minerals. So the first is crimson iron. Crimson iron is like iron that's overrun with uh, like corruption. So you have these three, uh, two to five, as it goes up as you go through the game, um, of these kind of growth spawners and they're spawning demons or monsters. And then oh, as you well, kill well. each growth, the other growths heal, like surge, spawn more monsters and they accelerate. So they get, just get slightly harder over time. Um, so it's just a full monster encounter. Upon completing it, you get the ore. Um, you've got Orochalcum, which is like guarded by these uh, also demons or demons were worshipping it. Um, and you notice it had like a shrine icon so after you um, kill all the demons you get the shrine buff which is you know without immediately it sounding underwhelming the old um, you had the old like shock where you got the shock nova and firestorm shrines except like done actual damage so like (laughs) all of a sudden you've got meteors and lightning storms raining down around you and they are actually designed to kind of destroy monsters oh that's cool just this spike of power where you can kind of just run through and let them just obliterate everything (laughs) um the third is petrified amber which is uh, looks like a little uh, kind of like a tree thing um (laughs) and clicking it and all of a sudden heaps of blight esque monsters kind of come out of the ground and try and attack it and it's almost like the old aurion missions from way back where you just have to protect (laughs) this tree from the um the blighted monsters it's not very difficult like none of these are pitched to be very very difficult um, but uh, they are going up in difficulty in the order that i am explaining them um the fourth is bismuth which i suspect will be people's favorite um the way this works is it's it's guarded by magic and rare monsters i think three packs i think one is rare well maybe early game not rare but late game it's like one is rare two are magic and they have an extra elemental modifier on them like the rare and magic mods they just got an extra one that's elemental aligned and when you you obviously kill them there's some free three packs of monsters no one's going to complain about that you (laughs) click the bismuth it releases the elements into the rest of the area um which will apply uh elemental modifiers to all magic and rare packs in the area oh um league monsters have a lower chance of getting them so it's not too out of control and that does come with the difficulty but it also comes with the increased item quantity and rarity that the wildwood mods come with basically an extra eater altar um obviously it doesn't spawn frequently enough so i don't expect people to do the whole you know run around the whole area killing nothing before clicking it yeah um (laughs) you know you'd be wasting all of your time um however of course i can imagine it is the magic finder's dream even though magic finding is nerfed, but you know, <laughs> that's a different thing. It is the current, whatever is to be magic oh, finder's dream. Magic of... finds buff because it's better now because you don't have to wear oh, crappy yeah, gear. Well, <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, sure. Whatever state it's in, or however you feel about it, it is uh, the dream for that person because um, obviously you can find even, uh, I believe you can find two of them in an area and all of a sudden you're doubling up on that. I will obviously double check that, but that was definitely the intention. Um, and then yeah you're getting like these kind of elemental tornadoes spawn throughout the level um obviously they don't spawn when all the monsters are dead so you're not just like losing and getting killed by a random tornado and then uh the fifth encounter is uh varicium which is the thing that the calgarans love so much and that very much is uh it's like the encounter from crucible where it's just like you know in, interact with this rock and it like builds up the amount of varicium and like spawns all the monsters around it and then you fight them and kill them and uh you get the varicium at the end and uh, the monsters you can see them kind of merging and upgrading over time and so it's a little bit of a pick your own difficulty obviously it doesn't have the whole i talk about crucible it doesn't have the whole weapon tree ruckus going on and having to put an <laughs> item in there and all that it's just mm-hmm. here's your encounter and then um of course uh, there is one boss as well, so occasionally you find a kind of hollow oh, in the ground. Yep. One boss. Yep. Okay. It's in game, very much in game. Um, quite difficult, and he is uh, guarding a lot of Reversium, and also, again, Ooh. can drop a unique, and I'm pretty sure all those bosses drop a pretty substantial amount of gold as well. So you've kind of got like five micro league mechanics kind of just there, yeah. also. Mm. 
uh, it, like on top of all that stuff. But as I said, it wasn't really covered like that extensively in the video. So yeah, I guess that was something that people like. That's your kind of like main combat stuff that you're kind of doing. Uh, that, that, that you know, that's an, an area. Um, in, in, in and, and you've got the bosses like attacking your town. And yep, boats there's a couple of things too. like that. So yeah, there's kind of other things. So th yeah, there's quite there's quite a lot. There's actually a lot going on with that. Uh, that more more so than what was kind of explained. But but all that to say, there's a lot of words to say that it seems like a classic fight in fight monster in circle. <laughs> For sure. Fight monster in circle. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh, one, two. It. It's two, th uh, three, five. So yeah, four encounters fight monsters in circle, and one is fight monsters in whole area. Right. Perfect. Yeah. That, that's yeah. Like everybody's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So even if you're not that into the meta progression side of things, it's still a fight monster in circle league. Yes, 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 yeah, for sure. It all comes back to it that. It is a and and again, <laughs> you can. There's no real harm in like just doing that for as long as you want, accumulating as much gold as you want, and then if you want to engage with the town later or something, that's always something you can do. Yeah. Um, end of the day, the gold is going to be your primary restriction. So being able to just farm for ages and get a whole bunch of gold isn't going to like and while not necessarily engaging with the town is not going to set you back that far yeah um, so this is very much a take it at your own leisure 100 percent, 100 percent. yes that touches on the next question and the the one that when i watched it i was like this is the thing people might be most concerned about is the somewhat controversial Real area time. of game design mm -hmm. timers time. right yeah, so sure. <laughs> we worried that this would give people ick because they just have that around yep. timers i can see what you mean and like that was honestly when i was talking to mark about like you know what's the thing that's going to be the controversial thing about the league that was certainly up there um one thing that we're wanting to make sure that's really clear though is that you can stack a lot of work like on uh, uh like in your town that can be done in a queue without you having to come back so it's not like you have to come back every freaking hour to like yep. check on anything right like yeah. you, can, you, concern, you can yeah. you can queue days of uh of of, of work oh uh, that's and, good yeah um, that's good like, for casual if you're players. doing like your map runners for example like you know you've got your big you've got your big queue there that you can you can do and then like you can just come back and then they've done all the maps you get all the loot from all of them um yeah so you can uh, just log in when you normally it, log exactly. in You're it not, also like, doesn't mean it's so long like there's these there's these sweet spots in time that we've really aimed for right anything too short highly annoying yeah, um, it, all, and right. then anything mm -hmm. too long feels like a mobile game right yep. right so yeah. you, we have this kind of sweet spots for a lot of them where it's like like for example you have your queue of maps but i think i and or no i will note like i'm going to say some times but it is like highly variable and you have the agency based on how much gold you have the skilled workers you have mm -hmm. you can get these things pretty damn quick um you can um but you can also have them take a bit longer and it's not necessarily the right or wrong answer to go either way so if you want faster turnaround on your rewards you do have some agency on that um it'll just cost more gold to do so and if you want to have like a slower turnaround like and focus your gold somewhere else that is entirely up to you if you want to do that so it's got a lot of agency however like um, yeah, time is all progress we have offline. been experimenting with yeah. numbers like a lot it has been discussed constantly and for example with the shipping you had the port of Calgary. that's the f that's the one that has the longest distance of so the 1500 kilometers that does take the longest and i currently believe it's like you know towards even 10 hours but there are ones that are taking going to take less than one hour um, and now there are advantages like a longer yeah. um, a longer shipment will have yield better rewards and have higher risk and different rewards each port has different unique rewards and a closer one but it's not like such a differential that you're always going to do well it's hard for me to predict exactly what players will think that is the best answer but it shouldn't be the case that you're always doing the thing that takes uh, you feel like you have to do the thing that takes like 10 hours so there's lots of quick things lots of long yep. things and it's kind of up to you how you want to engage with that um, and i think that's honestly what mostly differentiates a lot of this um, aside with the fact it's also gated by gold which requires you to actually play the game it's not yeah, like it's just some gold gating town, is going to be really you know, at the end of the day you have to be playing in order to actually achieve this killing monsters looting loot so um there's heaps of stuff there but we have aimed for that exact sweet spot such that if you are playing um you know it's not highly annoying and also not like i never get my rewards like i like it's going to be pretty bad if you're like i'm level um like I, let's say you're in act one and you unlock your shipping and you send your shipping and you're like okay i'm not going to get that back till i'm level 80 the you know ritual problem like, yeah that's like that's item. just <laughs> terrible right so yes there are very quick turnarounds as well um for things like that and then there are longer turnarounds when you're willing to give uh, spend that time to do so and noting there are three ships you could send one to a far port and then one to a close port so you can get some ships turning around with high frequency and another turning around with a longer frequency 
Um, and the same with the mapping. It's entirely based on the difficulty of the, ma- uh, difficulty of the maps mm. um, and, again, how skilled your runners are. So if you want to have higher turnarounds as well, you can put in either easier maps, lower tier maps, or you can put in uh, more difficult maps. Now, I did note in the live stream the timer on the mining was before we had done any iteration, so I'm pretty sure it had some real absurd amount of time to mine that ore. That was just a straight mistake. It is does not take that long. It is but much, yeah. much, much quicker. It's also worth mentioning with the stuff is that, yeah, like as I was saying with the queues, like, okay, you can just put as many, like when you uh, find resources and there's that sort of mining queue, it's not like you have to like manually reassign your things every time. Like they just move on to the next task. Yeah. So is, effectively yeah. what that means is, is that, yeah, you're not, you're not having to come back every like, you know, and, and, and refresh them. You just, you just play. Um, and then uh, the, the only stuff you have to come back anything where you'd have to come back and reset them like for example the mapping of the queue is long enough that you can just like jam a bunch of stuff in there and then like what i don't want is you to feel like you have to like wake up in the middle of the night and like freaking you know put more stuff yeah. in there and then come back that's that's what i want to avoid like yeah. it should be that you're still coming back at the normal time that you would play um and that's uh, the key if they can get that like right that, that is our design intent and so if that's not you know like we need to make sure that we're balancing it correctly so that that's the case you know that you don't feel pressured to like log in at some time you wouldn't normally wouldn't normally do it yeah this sort of thing can be fun because it's like you're you get to come back to rewards and, pro- yeah, yeah. and progress and everybody loves progress and yeah, progression yeah. right we're, for sure. we're addicts for that stuff that's why we <laughs> play this genre but I was definitely concerned about that idea that would have to you know I, I feel like if I didn't get on in half an hour after I was planning on logging off I wouldn't be able to reallocate my workers um, right, right 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 but right. you don't have it just does that yeah it just does well, well, okay. yeah we're not making a mobile game here I know that's yeah. the and you can't pay to skip any of these timers no, um, <laughs> so <laughs> mobile I wonder what happened to of course mobile. Not. And, and I'm not going to also at, at one point I, I know look, these things are always going to be d- uh, divisive they're not necessarily going to be globally loved and uh, part of it is just you're going to have to try it to understand mm-hmm. um, that the concept of a timer is scary to start with but I'm also on the other hand is not going to you know sit here about complaining about the on good terms with thing TFT, and also implement Chris something because that, you know, on the other hand i'm going to have equal a good frustration with myself as a player you're a bit um, about uh, this surprisingly but you know you want to play this after all don't you 100 <laughs> of course i want to play it i'm, I'm, co- I'm, I'm never going to make a game <laughs> the less important play. now um so yeah my hope is but of course that that assumes we get it right and the good thing is uh we're very very fast to react to this stuff so if the timers are tilted one way or another. We have so many levers we can adjust to rebalance. Um, it is, of course, we get our internal feedback, we get our alpha feedback on the times, but that's still a very small subset compared to everyone. Um, so I could expect, you know, if things aren't right, if they're off, if something is too, taking too long or too short, or there's not enough agency, uh, we're, we're very, very quick to be flexible to that stuff and react. I think to it's it. worth if saying we, here that long to. timers um, benefit yeah, casual it, players it's at interesting the expense of veterans. It's new, Short timers benefit for damn veterans sure. at the expense of um, casuals. But I'd say I'm more on the definitely on the side of excited over worried. Good. Um, yeah. But there's always a little bit of worry there. It comes with the job. And oh, I like you know. that you guys are still trying new things. You know, whether <laughs> they work out or not. Hundred percent. A large yeah. part of what we always try and do is push the boundary. Right. Like just doing the safe thing over and over and over again can make things feel quite stale so Mm -hmm. we definitely want to um take risks and make and see where they go and see how they evolve and because ultimately i believe that makes the best game possible for sure keep trying it uh one more quick nuance about that is it the progress on timers and things that's all even online versus offline yeah okay so whether you're like you don't have to like stay logged in stay online to speed things up Good stuff. The, the only things that can happen that disrupt it and uh, which uh, is obviously like if your map uh, if your ship gets commandeered mm-hmm. it can get commandeered offline or online right um mm. so it can stop it it isn't something that happens like ultra frequently and you can avoid it you I can then you can get it to the point where commandeering will not occur them. and the same with your atlas runners being kidnapped that can occur online damage offline, i agree but with again it is avoidable I don't think I do. um you don't it doesn't have to happen like if you you can get good enough people so and run slightly easier content and all of a sudden there's no risk of your atlas runners failing or anything like that yeah um, speaking so. of risk so how does this scale with like map tiers and map effect and stuff like that so as you move up through maps do you get more resources more gold um, mm. does it scale with like map quantity this would be a big one so your mods um yep gold so gold scales with everything that drops would scale with um in party i get my gold you get your gold we cannot share gold obviously you, you, there's no point in having a uh, if you can't Completely trade it then all of a sudden yeah. yeah items do not sell for gold so it's not like you can trade items to bypass that mm-hmm. um but everything yeah item map quantity scales gold yep all the same it's auto pickup obviously 
Um, yep, auto pickup with confirmed. obviously the the new enhanced like item pickup radius, uh, <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah. the amount of ore also should scale with quantity. Yes, um, obviously, uh, much like uh, sulfite, I guess for, from Delve. Um, so sulfite scales probably that's probably one of the closest quantity. comparisons in terms of like giving you a resource. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Yeah. Um, so it seemed like mostly gold was used to upgrade the buildings and things like that in your town and that, that sort of progress is mostly through that. So the resources are all for this shipping to get this risk reward system to get mm -hmm. currency and gear and stuff like that. And uh, the multiple pages of currency thing, that looked a bit crazy. Is, is that <laughs> for real? Like how much work is um, getting three pages of chaos orbs and divines <laughs> and stuff? Well, that's that agency I'm talking about as well where a long trip should yield a lot of loot. Now we have made some changes since then where um, what we're doing is instead of, because uh, we were scaling rewards on quite a quantitative um, axis and we've moved a lot of that into more qualitative so that like instead of getting more so much more currency linearly, you're getting better currency instead of more just so, so it's less of that. Alts roll but, up like, into chaos and whatnot. Yeah. If you save up, like you can just be like, I'm just going to play, uh, get all the gold and acquire as many resources as i can and send a shipment that's like maxed out in value and then put the best possible ship workers on there because you don't want it to you don't want to lose that shipment i'll tell you that and send it to the farthest thing like you'll get back a ton of loot but of course you have to you've just you're now getting one week of loot all in one go you know what i mean ah, like yeah. okay you will get a, an absolute ton which some people will find ultra satisfying yeah. And um, some people will, will cry. But yes, we are failed. trying to not. Obviously, it shouldn't be that you're just getting like you know 50 pages of items, but uh, you'll get some amount, and ideally, the quality of the items get better of, uh, as you send more, as opposed to just the quantity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw a question in chat as well. The uh, wages, like, how does that work with the? How, when's that getting paid? Like, do, do you get overdrafted account fees? <laughs> like, what are we doing with you? So you have to take your. Go so you've got your personal gold. And then there's a treasury and you want to put the gold in the treasury and the wages only take from the treasury. And the reason for that uh, is so that fund. you're not like just randomly losing your gold that you, you're mm. like, oh, okay, I'm going to get to 60,000 so I can buy these items. And all of a sudden it's just good, like draining it and you like can't figure out. So your wages are paid from the treasury. Um, you can do this via Johan or via the village map. There's just a, you hit add, drag, set an amount, hit add, it goes there. Um, and yeah, they are just continuously drained from that. Um, so it's not like come, it doesn't really come in chunks. It's like continuously going. And do they unionize if you <laughs> don't put enough money in there? Or? <laughs> um, not in Ray class to know. Um, <laughs> no, no worker protection in Ray class. All of a sudden, you might find you're collaborating with those pirates and with those bandits, and like you know, arranging. Uh, you're arranging them to come in and kidnap people more often and you know you had that abandon option we saw because those workers were uh, nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, 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 they don't. Uh, it's it's all very much a... Um, th we're all f achieving the same goal, I guess, on the same team. But they just want their money. That's fine. Mm. Yes, the children yearn for the yes. mines. <laughs> <laughs> so I cracked up when I saw the <laughs> map running teams auto simulating map thing yeah so do they actually simulate running the map do they like actually run the map for you and get the things out of it you would this, get out of it this would be really um, interesting we've tried very hard to make it feel like the case however of course like you know you don't simulate actually every single monster dying but it's <laughs> yeah, too much it's expensive a, it's right it's extrapolated but, but you you, you effectively it. take out uh, here's yeah here's what you'd have and then you have you know I mean, do you, here's the question: Do you trust the workers to pick up the right items? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> what if, like, every, what if it's filters. like you, you like get back your items? And you're like, damn it! I know you just, I know you left a mage blood on the ground. I just know you did. <laughs> um, so, but yeah. Anyway, you're not going to think about that, obviously. I mean, you can if you want, but um, uh, yes, you do get it back. So if <laughs> you send you them to, I, I, I can't remember which maps. We've shif shuffled all the div cards around, so I'm not sure which maps drop what. Now we whatever. can too. <laughs> whatever one drops mage blood if you put that base type in you are uh, the mage blood card you will get that card out that is the way to get that oh wow. um of course generally oh, people yeah. like running that themselves so and you're telling me that like if it's a hydra map they'll bring a hydra fragment back for you yep if you put in a hydra map and they clear it successfully it's worth noting they have a um percentage amount of clear um, and you can get that as high as you possibly can, but sometimes they get through like fifty percent of it and die because you put the map in as too hard. Yeah, You'll get fifty percent of the six items. portals halfway through a hydra map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of the, if, if 
if you're not sending elite people, yeah, <laughs> they're kind of <laughs> bad. Di- there's different quality. Yeah. I think scout nuts might actually work I mean, well with players. Players. If you're sending your miners into the mapping, they don't they don't know what to do. They're just like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I've tried mining the monsters and I failed. On the first pack. Yeah. But yeah, they'll um they'll bring that back. You chuck in a map with five delirium orbs, they'll probably all die. But if they don't, they'll bring you back some splinters and some yeah. delirium rewards. Yeah, so, like, so what's like the the most? Sketch, I wonder if this respects your atlas. Like, juiced up map that they can run here if you get the best of the best i mean the same as the player right a fully like oh, yeah? a, a prop corrupted t17 with you know whatever else is bloody on <laughs> it i mean <laughs> i mean or 16 right. i mean they'll probably they might get you know, sometimes you actually like you it's not mistake proof you can put it in and it can be like they have a one percent chance of one uh, percent of the map will be good luck, guys and you put it in and you see the timer count down like two seconds and then they fail and you're like oh they just died <laughs> they just died to the first monster Damn, that's almost as yeah. bad as me um so yeah you you don't want to do that <laughs> but um i mean you technically can you can just send them to die um <laughs> now they don't th- in that case they don't actually permanently die that can happen and you actually can lose the worker. Oh, wow. um, there is a sink on that, so you are constantly trying to find more, but it's, it doesn't happen that often. Excellent. And again, it is mostly avoidable by being playing a little bit more safe instead of just sending them to their demise all the time. <laughs> this, thing, this whole thing blows my mind. I just I love the idea that we can just have like a bunch of plebs now to farm our fragments for it. So we it is going to cost a lot of gold, I think. <laughs> like like There's a gold sink, while I they do the little <laughs> the peasant work in fields. <laughs> Crazy. How did you like resist the temptation to go, not go super hard on this and like, let us gear them and make parties and change their loot filters. Well, and you know, like early on, there, were, <laughs> there was all yeah, sorts of yeah. uh, there was all sorts of stuff like that that we were talking about. Like, uh, you know, it was like we were going like full mercenary system with all sorts of stuff for a Uh-oh. while, but uh, it was just it was too much and it was too complicated. So, um, you know, we decided not to in the end. But uh, yeah, like the, the 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 whole auto running maps thing was certainly something we were very keen on very early in the league. Um, so you, you know, fun. this massive expansion. Yeah. This yeah. is yeah. actually the downscoped version. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. We, did, sense. we yeah. certainly had mercenaries uh, as in the first concept and yeah. it was like you can send your mercenaries either on the ships or to the maps and right. you can gear them up and you can give them skills and they have specializations it's like it, oh, was, it was just too much it, though. It, like it was, it was too much of management too yeah. much like you know we, uh, yeah not 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 good so different so much going different on different yeah. problem now uh, mm-hmm. but yeah that does kind of sound like another league that i want though i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> this auto exile thing right 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 <laughs> Exile team manager, kind of like a sports manager <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, secret yeah. Chris Ariel awesome. Nanites is no one Maybe understands the it future. all. <laughs> Maybe. All right. That's why we're so, here. Yeah, that features list, like that video just kept going. Um, like you guys also showed runesmithing, which is like a new take on, take on bench crafting, but mm-hmm. as enchantments. Um, these rune words, are they all known recipes or is there some like discovery process there? Um, so you start with a few available. Um, so there are different runes, different names. So there's like a sun rune, life rune, power rune. There's all these different names. And um, and un- uh, you start, I believe, you start with all the, s- all the ones that require only sun runes. And then once you get a life rune, you can take it to Danig and he's like, oh, now I can learn all of the things that require life rune. Oh, he's and then he's so doing on. the runes are going to be nice. So you, yeah. You, yeah, I mean, he's, nice. the Calgurans are the ones who know how to do it. Um, you're just yeah, bringing good. them the resources for it. So <laughs> you eventually work your way up to the very most powerful ones and you, you get things like what you saw there. There was the fire Mjolnir, which you can put on one hand or two hand axe what we've done is with with, um, with a lot of the basic outcomes you can apply that to any weapon but with a lot of the very specialized ones you can only apply it to one type of class so the idea there isn't that like every build is just Ooh. now doing the doom fletch prism on any weapon that's the one we that saw on the uh, live stream it's like well no, that specifically different. goes on two-handed maces and weapons feel different to each other that's i think cool. it, the, the fire mjolnir one that was there goes on i think it's one-handed axes and um you know each thing goes on specifically one weapon and it what it allows you to do is take so we've taken like an interesting uh bow unique mechanic and now you can put it on like some dagger or something like that new builds Um, cool yeah and they get pretty powerful as far as like i think there's one that is like um 100 uh you can uh 100 reduce duration of like soul gain prevention for uh for socketed gems on daggers and like there's freaking every 20 seconds or something you get haunted by a different torment spirit and um i think there's like a rotating shrine buff one so it's like every x second you're getting a new shrine buff on you and not a lesser shrine by the way 
and sometimes including Ooh. Divine Shrine as well. So you oh. can just be like, I'm just going to sit here until I'm immortal and then I'll do <laughs> the boss. Tier 17 <laughs> mapping strategy. Um, but those all require the, the highest tier rune, which we expect to be very, very expensive. Um, yep. So yeah, is some something that you can trade, the runes, between players? Yeah, 100%. Yep. 100%. Yeah. Um, yes, they all come, well, primarily all come from shipping, yep. um, which you can do pretty early in the game, um, but I suspect late game. And then uh, they are considered a... Um, like additional bonus from shipping where it's like if you trade to the Kalgurans, they'll send you that back and the more you send them the more runes they'll send you because they're like thanks for doing business with us yeah do you know um, what they're sending you back when you send them a shipment or is it kind of just like uh no we've intentionally been quite vague with that yeah. just so people can figure it out now it isn't it is there's some determinism and then some that's just influenced so like i can say for example generally crops are giving you back currency and there's some okay. general influence, but we want people to figure that out and experiment yeah, and make up right. their mind as to what they think is the best combination so to send certain to different locations, ports. Certain resources yep. are going to give certain mm -hmm. rewards back that players yep. can learn. And That's um, cool. there are bonuses on the port. So like you, you, I think in the numbers there, it's said a hundred. So at any given time, it's like they'll pay double for wheat or I'll pay. The, and then once you fill that <laughs> yeah. order, cool. um, so after you've sent 10,000 wheat, they might be like, all right, now we're going to pay triple for the next 500 Verisium you send us and stuff like that. So you are changing your shipments to different ports based on those bonuses. Um, and then, like, for example, the item for disenchanting, just a random slight pivot here, but the item you get from disenchanting, the Thaumaturgic Dust, that is a multiplier on your shipment value. So whatever Ooh. you send, you then send, send a dust. So if you send some amount of dust, it'll just double your shipment value. Um, and so that one, so you, you know, there's, that it's almost key. like a meta reward mechanic yeah. in that regard. Disenchanting sounds like up your gear deal. and the gear grinder yeah, thing. That's from, also another feature yes, that was in right. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, and yep, you get a lot more dust for destroy. So <laughs> just to add some value to some one chaos T0 uniques, um, <laughs> disenchant them because they will give you the most, they will give you oh, the most so dust. So rarity is the key yeah. there. So. Um, yeah, the, generally it's like better items give you more. So six mods, higher tier modifiers, it's and then rarity, uh, higher you guys like adding sneaky new item syncs don't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. get those 1c items to 2c <laughs> for sure. i mean it just tu it turns garbage items into good items as the yeah. idea or, or into, into more dust. tickets at good mm. items well yeah. yeah but the point being the dust is the ticket <laughs> yeah. at better yeah. items you know yeah gotcha awesome um so another thing recombination returns from sentinel um it was mentioned that it's not gonna be as strong as it was it was obviously one of the strongest crafting mechanics we had outside of maybe necropolis and that um, in what ways is it weaker now? The, the, there's two things that have mostly changed about it. One is, and not that I can even specifically remember exactly how it all works, but there was all this like chance to mutate stuff that was going on with yep. it. That's all gone. It just so it combines the items and that's what it does. The items yep. together. So is yep. there like the unique extra mechanic like modifiers that can randomly appear? Is no, that gone? No, those oh, are gone. they're gone. Though. Um, and so it is just merged two items together. The other thing that I like about doing it this way, as opposed to having it gated behind a currency item, is that you can actually engage with it earlier in the game. Now I know oh, that's going yeah. to be pretty unorthodox for most existing players, but it's still something you can choose to now engage with because the gold cost is based on the item level of the item input. Oh, yeah. So you can have it be very, very oh. cheap early and more expensive later. And so it just opens it up to more players instead of just being this thing that you're only ever going to use on the best of the best of the best. Fun, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. I like that scalability that you can use it early. Mm -hmm. cool. um, or even like early maps, you know, so I'm going to feel super yeah. punishing and like you can do things like that um, if you want to, of course. Well, it's a good mechanic for that, but something that wasn't really accessible. Yes, correct. It'll be a lot yeah, of one mod. Sure um magic items yeah and i know sentinel was added you they don't drop recombinators now because it's done through this mean so yeah despite sentinel being just there, a yeah. thing that you can randomly find in extra ma in maps to get more loot just more juicing yep gameplay mm -hmm. yep. yeah and you've done a bit of that too so in addition mm -hmm. to the new campaign stuff making the campaign more interesting just with this random little encounters you've got more stuff just appearing in maps as well so wildwood and sentinel as well yep why not yeah, why not, eh? More juice. Love it. It's fun. <laughs> um, I like the idea of just the random encounters. Like, they're not on the Atlas tree right now. That yeah. doesn't mean they never will be. Um, but I like the fact that there's a handful of things that are just randomly spawning. And so you're doing your rotation and that throws a little bit of a spanner in the works and, and an, only in a positive element, right? It's not like it well, takes Especially for things like that that are effectively just, this will give you more loot and currency and stuff. So like Wildwood and um, Sentinel, they're just about like giving you a big boost to Magic Find. So you might not necessarily want those to be something that players can have active all of the time, but rather as like mm -hmm. a cool bonus that randomly well, appears to make your map spicy. That is the other benefit because it is random and not yeah. um, something that mm. you 
can just have guaranteed it's not they can you play. they can be yeah. stronger. Yeah. yeah, they can be they can more be stronger because, because they're not guaranteed. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely true. Otherwise, uh, they have to match the exact power of every other league on or uh, thing you can invest into onto the Atlas tree. Cool. Mm-hmm. So there was the mention of those like three bosses that can disrupt your shipping and all that sort of stuff. Um, when they take something hostage, is just talking about like the, this gameplay. What is that gameplay like? Can you are you going into like random fights or is it always a boss fight that you're going into when you? It's always a boss fight. Yep. Um, your Atlas runners will always be taken by bo- uh, by the Bandit Lord. Your yep. uh, shipment will always be commandeered by the Admiral, whatever his name is. I forgot. Um, <laughs> in- internal <coughs> and by Pirate Boss. Um, I, they get named and I don't remember them all the time. Um, and then the one you find in the world is always the same one as well. Um, and then the, the, the you pretty much just go, it'll notify you and then you go back to the town, to King's March and the NPC will just be like, here's a portal, go there, kill this person or don't if you don't want to. <laughs> um, like if you feel like you're going to fail, um, you shouldn't go and do it, right? Um, and you can bring your party members, but you can only enter at once. Like once you die, you cannot re-enter. So um, one shot only. Okay, let's take a little bit of a turn now. Looking backwards at Necropolis and reflecting on some of the changes that happened in it. First, the overall endgame ch- overhaul, such as the removal of sextants and the massive scarab rework. Um, how do you just feel about that overall, both of you first? How did that, how that went? I think they the almost went? nailed it, but not quite. Um, I, I do think overall good, but it's very easy for that to get, uh, you know, looked at from a perspective of a few things that are bad and then looking at it badly. Um, like there are certainly some things that uh, were imperfect and we are making some measures to change that. Um, but I do think overall the shakeup was pretty healthy. Um, and then when I talk about the bad things, I'm talking like the T17 maps being too hard, right? Yep. I'm to- And that kind of, it, it it's overshadows a lot of what's good about it because there's these few things that aren't right. And then I'm also talking like, okay, we removed Wandering Path, great. And then we added back to Basics, which is also gone now, by the way, just oh. to clarify, which wasn't <laughs> mentioned there. Sure, like Back to gone. Basics is, was even more unhealthy yep. than Wandering Path or equally unhealthy, depending. But um, both of them not good not achieving the philosophy we want so we didn't <laughs> because of that and Magic because back to basics shambles. became the meta Again. it ended up like not even evolving that much and so i'm hoping with this this now set of changes but all of that ultimately comes about with because what's going to happen is when you are releasing content on this scale uh, and I am certainly a risk taker. Um, yeah, yeah. I like to push the boundaries and all that. You are going to have these things happen. It is borderline impossible for us to test everything. And that's where you see a lot of the reactionary patches that we did early in the league to try and fix and improve everything. That, Some definitely, of w- that definitely was something that was really hard just um, mm. you know, for the team as well. And like all, of, It's also very hard just decision making about is this something that should be ch- uh, fixed or is it not? Um, like there was a, it, was, it was pretty rough at the start there. And I think... Um, that is something we're trying to improve this time around by looking more at the extremes and like really zeroing in. So um, there's definitely a mandate to QA now of like, okay, we need to really work out like what is the actual maximum possible thing for this and like, you know, like what is the difficulty of what that results in? Um, like, is it okay? Like, is, is the uh, difficulty versus reward correct for what, uh, you know, the players can do here? This kind of thing. And um, it's something obviously that we should have been like thinking more about before and like it, it's something you know that we're really making sure this time we'll try and do better but it, it, it's tough because like even thinking about what the most extreme case is can be really hard like you, you it, so many things took us by surprise in terms of like particular combinations of things like um there, there's so many just ways to combine stuff and like from so much content from the past as well that like you just it's like yeah it's 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 hard to find like the fact that there were people finding new ways to abuse stuff even weeks after the uh uh you know it came out just sort of shows you that like yeah there's just uh uh, it, it, it was kind of nuts yeah you guys asked me yeah. an interesting question yesterday when I first came in it was like how does 150 uniques from a single boss sound to you I'm right. like what the that sounds crazy <laughs> what are you talking about it's only 150 so uh, well, I guess we'll, t- we'll talk about some of the things that were happening that people weren't aware of so there's right. um, there was a um, there was a reddit thread and so I can't remember how far into the league that was pretty much like what the heck has happened to the prices of T0 uniques yeah. And you yeah. had like Defiance of Destiny at like 4C. It was like actual craziness. And um, yeah, upon looking at this, and, and oh no, none of this was anyone abusing or exploiting anything. Not a bug or um, anything, yeah. yeah. In fact, I think, did we tell you the value? 
of how many unique items were dropping in some uh, of these. I, 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 told, I, okay. I told him. Yeah. I was going to ask you to guess, but we were getting <laughs> over 100,000 unique items in some instances. And yeah. I'm not even talking in, in a, a map. Part, in, a single yeah, map. in a single map. Yeah, single and I'm map. not what? talking in a... I'm not talking a six-man group. I'm talking solo players yeah. who are able to achieve this. Um, and... That's basically this is where a lot of those things, so like for example, the uh, shape attached rarity, there were just so many layers of multipliers that if used mm. correctly altogether, and but you ended up with less than 100 people on the entire realm acquiring over 99% of all T0 uniques. And yeah. so we <laughs> have gone and looked at all that and been like, okay, with this, it, that is highly compromising the economy and the integrity yeah. of the economy. And as um, and we fixed some of this last league, but we are doing more of it this time to make sure that your average and above average player isn't like having the economy ruined as their experience. But we're just really, really controlling that like high top end. And I'm talking like most people would never have known this was happening. They yeah. would have just been like, "Where are all these uniques coming from?" Um, it's not a bug. It's just the math no, no, of it's just correct. Yeah, exactly. It's just correct. Exactly. Legal stuff and like, there's always a question with stuff like that because generally speaking, Elite, it'll, we have the policy of T seventeen will keep that from being the case. And yet there were certain cases, and, this, and that was really uh, tough. The last league, just because yeah. Yeah, like we did do uh, some changes to certain mechanics, um, which we wouldn't normally do because it was just so ridiculous. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like there was stuff going on there that just was not okay. Uh, um, I saw a screenshot of like one of the monsters that would be part of this, and it was like. Uh, you know, it, it had a list of modifiers that was the entire screen, right? right. <laughs> yeah, sure. we were, yeah. yeah, we were talking yesterday about whether or not we need a way to collapse the display of the number of essences underneath something's life bar. Oh. It's like, uh, well, where are we at? Which, by the way, it's still there. So it's like, you know, a thing that you can still do. Um, but yeah, it's uh, and I'm not talking like we're getting rid of all the uniques. Like, uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm asking you, is 150 all right? And you're like, that sounds excessive. And I'm like, well, it's like, you know, several hundred times less than what it was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still t top off screen, bottom off screen of unique items yeah, yeah. just everywhere. Um, and that's just like a single monster. You get the whole res in the area. So we want it to be extreme. Like, don't get yeah. me wrong, but it shouldn't be that the entire economy is ruined by, uh, you know, a hundred people. people who yeah. aren't, yeah. or a few people even, who aren't even abusing anything or exploiting anything or doing anything illegitimate. Like, and the problem is, yeah, that's where we got into that state where it was like, all right, nerf, do we have to nerf all X, A, B, C, and D as we kind of discovering and figuring out these strategies? And it's like, let alone the fact that this stuff absolutely <coughs> rams the performance of the instances, right? Like, yeah. I don't know if people saw it when those um, meat sacks were dying and you'd get like six second lag spikes while it's generating the unique items. And so, yeah, anyway, a lot of it is it's much more controlled now. We've actually assessed exactly where all that was coming from. We've taken a lot of caution to not nerf the average above average even further than that. I'm a, no talking. a normal player should not see any change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah, their goal. I mean, it's like I loved how hit the point one percent feeling with your ridiculous changes to mm -hmm. the end game here. Yeah, like. It feels like you've uh, really opened up over this past couple of leagues to hundred percent um, change stuff pretty wildly. I, again, I go back to that. Stuff, go back to that philosophy of like, if we can do stuff to make things better, we do it. And it's just the unfortunate reality is that, and I'm the, ultimately the one pushing most people to do this for POE one. And the unfortunate reality is it comes with risks, and as a result, failures of which are hundred percent on me, like without question. Um, and that's why, again, like uh, straight after the patches, it's like full hands on deck trying to make sure everything is as good as possible. And then we get into a little bit of that difficulty of thinking some people want the game to stay as it is, regardless of the state. And a lot of people want it to keep changing. And we get into this kind of like, which side of this fence do we fall on? And we have to really evaluate each change and do it. But look, ideally, the changes wouldn't be necessary. Um, but when you're changing this much, doing patches this massive, um, this quickly, uh, some of it is inevitable. Um, I would hate to, I personally, and you could convince me, you could, or not convince me, you could tell me I'm wrong about this, you might be able to convince me, um, I would prefer that we do everything possible with the time allocated, as opposed to like, play it safe, do something, a small patch and give it there, and yeah, sure it's safe, less will go wrong, but at the end of the day there's way less to do, way less fun, way less changes, less to learn and evolve with, and it just feels like, um, you know, I, I, I suspect at the end of the day it would be way more boring, um, even though it might be more safe. Um, so, again, it's possible that I'm on the I'm gone too far one direction, and we have pulled back a little bit here on some of that safety. But 
Like I, I never want to get to the point where we're releasing something flat and stale just because it's safe. I want to always be making sure that we're doing everything to make things as fun and exciting and the best as possible for everyone, including myself, when I play the game. Well, these updates have felt way more energetic. It's, <laughs> I think it's refreshing, I think, for a lot of us who have been playing for 10 years at this point. Right pretty cool stuff so on the tier 17 maps it was they were intended to be like a gateway to uber bosses but they ended up being harder and more restrictive than that actual content and we had uber boss viable builds you know really struggling with that actual content so uh how are you kind of changing things with that or are you happy with it yes the nerfing damage, i mean the is... ultimate numerical change to t17 monsters is that uh they have uh, it's approximately 55% less life, so they have less than half the life they oh. had before and 30% less damage. 30% less damage, um, Which good. seems extreme, and I will just note that was, like, actually not intended. Yeah, um, an interesting story about that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's uh, kind of unfortunate that uh, two different designers uh, made a, th th did the life change to T17 without realising the other person had already done it. That's so funny. Um, so that was kind of like an un unintended side effect, but it's like... When you come down to it, you're like, oh, so why the hell are these monsters so damn tough? And then we're like, oh, crap. Uh, there's <laughs> <laughs> someone, uh, there were two, two people who made this change independent of each other. We have I'm countered that, that on the bosses bleak. to some degree, so they are, you know, not just like an absolute joke now. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, the, just the monsters themselves, which it did compound with Back to Basics and the mod scaling, like the mm. thing... Once you have like four hundred percent increased area of effect on the monsters, it's kind of like okay, this is like getting a little on the bosses. I should say it's like this is getting a little bit out of hand. Like, how can I dodge this mechanic that is larger than the arena? Um, you could argue they're signing themselves up for it, but then it's like you want that for the rest of the map, which then means the bosses are pretty much like impossible. Strong word to use because everything's always possible with enough, you know, build ruckus going on but anyway it's it yeah it, it wasn't right like these things weren't right so hopefully we're back to basics removed and um you know the changes to t17s uh, um, implicitly it should be more approachable to more players less you have to play like a subset of 10 12 builds in order to achieve them like it should be way more open um obviously with all the melee builds as well that should be a hell of a lot more viable this time so i would expect a lot more players to you know be enjoying those as opposed to you know because again we're solving the item quantity thing where it's like we want to open up more builds and make you feel less like you have to play certain things um so then t 17s being that hard resulted in the exact same thing these are not intentional things if we when you get to uber pinnacle it's all right for the the number of builds to reduce drastically because it's like you want to be a boss killer at that point or you know that's fine but when it's we're just talking about like, like the top tier of maps it's not okay to have it be so constrained there so just mistakes were made honestly and they <laughs> hopefully are now fixed um yeah <laughs> so um the main design of the modifiers on these maps is these build bricking modifiers ones that you know, are just basically not doable for certain builds or thereabouts. Why is this the method that you went with for these modifiers? Um, I personally just think it is important that you actually are investing in rolling your map and finding the maps that you can do or change choosing uh, how you can overcome the modifiers. And I know that's probably not a pop popular opinion. I very much un uh, understand that a lot of people are just like, I I'll can go, I can go, I can go, and that's all I want to do. Um, but I think especially with the upper tier like that and the extra layer of rewards that they're giving, I think you should have to invest more currency into it and more thought into it or be like, oh, this is a real good map. It's got like some specific reward modifiers you want, but there's this one bad thing I'm going to have to deal with and then you actually do commit to dealing with it. Um, it is, again, hopefully adds more ebbs and flows to the process as opposed to it, again, just being like, out go and run out go and run and that can be quite um where some people like that and that's okay you can still obviously do that <coughs> at 16s um i do like these things having an impact on your build just not to either one it should be avoidable and or not to the extent it was before um and again investing into them rolling them like it's certainly not something i'd want to stray away from i actually consider it a success when you have to re-roll your maps yeah again probably a controversial that. take but um, I it's think it is a much better thing getting an actual it like feels more like an actual game mechanic as reasonable. opposed to like well at the point it's just Alk and Go and Alks are worth so little why even, why you just drop them rare and like why are you even engaging with the currency on maps system why have mods if the mods don't matter do sure. you do you take like some consideration to how many chaos for example you expect someone to put into a map to produce mods that are on average viable for their build that they're doing 
Um, we do, yes. So, I mean, what? Not in the context of a build here, but like, for example, we were like, okay, if we want to make T17s able to be easier, like, should we reduce it back to four to six modifiers? Yep. But then you just, the, the argument, the reason why we never did that, just this league, is because, well, now it's even more chaos you have to invest to get six modifiers because the right answer is probably to run six modifiers because it gives the best rewards. And so it's like, well, that's just going to massively increase the amount of chaos orbing someone has to use, don't do on those maps. So let's not do it that way. Let's find a different way to do it. Um, so we're definitely considering how many you're having to. From a like hyper build specific, it's like if I'm playing this exact specific build, how many chaos on average do I need to avoid it? No, not like hyper specific. But in terms of like broad mechanics, we do generally try and consider that. Yeah, I imagine you'd um, be taking like a range of builds and saying, oh, on average, it's going to take about 10, 20 rerolls to yeah. produce a map you want to mm -hmm. run on this character. But uh, my hope is that some people at least... Uh, look at it and go okay if i just change this one thing then i can still run it um you know so it's not always just like yeah. uh, change Rodrigo. one thing like i know this is probably flask. the preferred strategy in fact i'll do it myself probably most of the time um you just avoid anything that's going to be any cause any friction to your character but like there are probably a good chunk of players who are just Patch like notes will be I will after this finishes deal with this bit of friction by either slowing yep. down a little bit or changing something or subbing something out or you know um and, and I, it's and good for those players play to do will, that because then technically they're having to invest less will currency. Will absolutely smash um, GGG Whether or not it's worth happens. the payoff, it's up to them really to decide that. But. You want the mods to matter, and I get that. And these certainly do matter, but how do you feel about it versus modifiers that do things like, say, um, this modifier adds these certain sorts of packs of monsters to the map that are very difficult, but also increasing the reward and making the map more interesting by making it more different as opposed to something like, you know, your energy shield was turned off. Um, the problem you have with things that are implicitly adding direct rewards um, beyond certain other things is obviously the issue of the fact that you now feel like you have to roll for them. And you yeah, saw like this with the shape. Is a maze yeah, with, well, yeah, and with the shape of touch modifier earlier this league before it was changed, all of a sudden everyone, and now all of a sudden you're spending more currency on the maps than I you were that avoiding is the, plan, the builds yes. because Won't now be you're not only having to get a specific rewarding outcome. So you're having to dodge the build I'll jump over as well. YouTube for the and so it was even more. Of the and patch notes. As we've uh, we've removed some mods this league, like I know the barrels was one of them where people were going for the barrels and it's a couple of, we've removed a few of those like you know, sink currency into this. I would actually expect the amount of chaos you're sinking into these is less this league because we've removed those. Um but we have kept some, but like we've also then made them rarer, so you're like less likely, but then you so if, if you, which I know you could say is um, counterintuitive to invest in currency because now you have to invest more if you have to get them. But there is a point beyond where you're now no longer expecting to get it and thus you are just like, okay, getting it as a surprise as opposed to when it's kind of within reach, you will just sink currency until it's there. Um, but I actually do like the fact that, like, I honestly... I liked the days back when when you would roll for a lot of the maze and then you'd exalt the maps and stuff yep. like that. That stuff was I actually, I actually I found like that, that quite well. enjoyable. Um, but uh, yeah, it was kind of like the game is a bit different than how it used to be. But uh, for sure, yeah. I so like yeah, we're not obviously maze. going in that path anymore. Um, but uh, there's still a little bit of it there. The mods still matter. Uh, reward mods can be bad but it's good to also have them. Um, there's like a little bit of friction there, which is hard to get perfectly right. Um, and then in the same sense, yeah, I mean, some of them are probably, there are some other small balance changes around T7 things, like those bloody Revenant packs are like, we're out of control. Quick um, Discord invite you, if people want All of a sudden the corpse is exploding that you can't even see. Like we did all of this like telegraphing improvements to detonate dead and then like missed Revenants. Good stuff, yeah. Um, so all of a sudden now you're just dead to this invisible corpse explosion. And, like, Classic. There's a few other yeah, um, fine-tuned balance around some of the T17 chart. stuff to make it feel less terrible. And um, I think it's pretty good. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but I'm hoping that it's going to feel a lot, lot better. Should uh, tier 17s be one of the most profitable things to farm? uh i think yes i mean uh what is the argument for no i've just <laughs> you know, seen like, discussion i don't mean from you i just mean in general, general yeah, like some people are you know concerned about whether that's the thing that should be happening or not well should t16s before that and you could argue well okay t17s you have to trade for and that's the real difference yep. um is that if you want to run them permanently you have to trade for them but generally the economy sorts itself out there to some degree it's just that it adds that extra layer of annoyance yep. um 
but then also if T17s were self-sustaining, then it was kind of like what differentiates them from 16s at that point. Um, it's just back to what you were doing with 16s, except it's they're now purple with harder modifiers. And you could argue that's better or worse, except I really like the idea of that, you know, when you are just genuine, generally playing and not engaging with, you know, the trade to that level, you're just you're doing 16s with the occasional popping into 17s here and there. I do think that is generally better. Um, but I can see why it can be annoying for someone who's like, I have to trade for these because I, I don't want to run anything but them. Um, but that kind of can always be argued to be the case for almost everything. Yeah, that's, that um, is the case. I mean, and, in, some, in some ways, T17s are like, like are, are the map scarcity that, you know, like the, the map system used to have long, long ago um, at lower levels. You know, it's like you've got this one tier that kind of has that sort of like, you're not expected to necessarily, like if you're just playing, you know, without trade, to be able to just run it again and again for T17 specifically. Uh, and that's kind of also comes down to that same thing with the, the mods. You know, it's like the reason you're caring um, about re-rolling and so on for T17s is because of the fact that, that you don't necessarily have they're not just growing on trees um, so uh, yeah that kind of that, that's why you've got a bit of a different philosophy there with the mods that they have on as well I know this stuff is like pretty uh, it's going to be pretty polarizing between people mm -hmm. as to what's right hey, there but like, for the it is very important to us that the ebbs and flows remain mm -hmm. and you don't just end up with this flat boring grind um, at the very top end like that like it should be evoking difficulty and it shouldn't just feel you know completely just it, it, it again it gets further away from a game and more towards just a kind of afkable slash or, and I, I don't mean actually afkable but you know something <laughs> where you're not really investing much emotion into and thought into and it doesn't feel like you're playing at that point it just feels like you're just going along with it um yeah. so i think it's very important to have the different spikes and things come and go and to have friction and all of those things can we get our atlas runners running, running that, you'd find stuff that. would get very boring very quickly just and we'll uh, be better very at quickly, it how us. do you feel about the betrayal changes, like the change to the Veiled Chaos and the simplification of it as well? It feels like now it's mostly people just kind of spamming Katarina with maybe some consideration to uh, getting some like div card stacks or something like that. But you're not really doing as much of the engaging with the board now, I think. Um, betrayal is in a very bad state, for sure. I am okay. not happy with it. It was on the list of 325's thing. I, I know, despite the fact we have so much, there was more. Uh, we didn't get round to doing it. Um, it's currently slated for 326. I'm very much hoping we can do it then. Um, the main thing I want to divorce is... Uh, so I actually just want there to be... Um, there is one safe house, and that... Uh, and so all four connect to one thing. Um, oh, sorry, how do I explain this? It's like, effectively, Katarina isn't tied to um, the safe house. Like, you can do your safe house, and that will give you a ticket to Katarina. Oh. And so you just have one safe house that has the whole board on it, and you earn intelligence for it, and each the people still have their uh, reward association, and then doing that gives you a itemized version of katarina you can run separately um but the main thing is you're not linking the board to katarina's because there's always been this friction of do i yeah. do i min max yeah. my katarina outputs or do i you know do my interesting board layout yeah. and you're just at the point where it's like screw all that i just want as much mastermind intelligence as possible yeah. so i'm not going to interact with anything on the board really except for whatever might min max that and so yeah, I want to divorce those two things so that you don't have that conflict because we have never been able to get that balance and I don't even know if that's possible. You're always either going to want to like never run Katarina because it destroys your board state or you'll always run Katarina because the Veiled Orb. And so I want to yeah divorce those two things such that one doesn't destroy the other um, because it hasn't been right the whole time. So And I think that will just be a much, much better if we do that and then Katarina is just there is a thing you can do you do the boss fight and you can trade for it you can buy the tickets to it if you want or uh, and then you can do all the board interaction you know separately you'll still have a i want to min max my um safe house running to get tickets to katarina but what we can do is have um, a correlation of the chance of getting it or the number of the tickets you get to katarina correlate to the state of the board um somehow but um at least you're not going to, you don't, I don't ever want it to be like, I'm not going to fight Katarina because I don't want to reset the board. Um, 
Yeah, like, I don't think those two frictions should ever occur. Uh, it, it's, it hasn't been right, honestly, since we released it, to yeah, be honest. All right. so. Let's let him cook, hey? Let's the betrayal was also <laughs> the most popular league they've ever had. So. Uh, so let's talk a, just a little bit about Necropolis itself. Kind of uh, I know you were pretty excited for the mechanic. I was too, because I love a good, thick crafting uh, league. And it certainly ended up very powerful, but ultimately the crafting mechanic, not that popular. You never got positive surprises with engaging with it, the corpse. That was was the main thing. Managing all of that, but how do you feel about Necropolis in hindsight now? Um, Yeah, definitely that part is, well, we kind of knew going in that it was more on the complicated side, for sure. Um, Some things just kind of, it's not necessarily a problem for something to be a little bit more complicated like that, but um, it probably went a little bit too far. That being said, it was pretty damn powerful especially after our changes we made very early into the league um in terms of getting like full t1 modded items um probably mm. went a little bit too far to be honest yeah um but yeah that being said understood it was a bit too um computer sciencey i like to call it in terms of like lots of figuring out you know what to do and kind of uncertainty to the point where it overwhelmed a lot of people um and that's where you see you know i even recombinating and runesmithing coming back way more simple straightforward some things are just very clean cut some things are a little bit more complicated and different users appeal to both um would i have changed it now knowing that i mean i would have had the balance initially go out correct at the start but i i would say there's still a place for things like uh, for for it and yeah, you know the update was certainly very solid for yeah. it making it a lot like it's a simpl- lot better simplified but- a bunch of stuff down with it as well i'd probably have gone a bit further with the simplification if i'd had to redo it with some of it um some of those like meta mods and some of the more crazy things are a little bit you know for yeah, me it wasn't mods about was... so much how much complicated it was Why? and uh it was more about the the like just getting so many corpses <laughs> oh, trading sure, for so sure. many corpses sure, right sure sure uh yes fewer more impactful ones would have been a lot better yeah, yeah you ended up getting a lot i don't uh, that's partly due to the atlas tree passives which was a mistake straight up Good goodbye, they're gone. Yeah. Um, if it was to redo, experiment. Th- done. yeah, yep, hundred percent experiment. <laughs> they're no longer there. Um, I, everyone saw that as an atlas tree tax. Yeah. Yep, it was. Um, you could have argued making them way weaker would have mitigated that. Whatever. Why? The in- original intention of it was it was like okay, we want these keystones because yeah. it allows people to change behavior. And I think if we are to see that again, we would have that. We'd have. Imp- introduce ways for people to change the behavior but not invest into the increases and more corpses and all of that because um it felt mandatory and it often will when you have the league in every single area and so yeah that was a pretty big contributor towards this problem um it felt like the opposite of what we were talking about with gold where gold allows you to turn like user experience friction into gameplay friction it was the opposite where it was all user yeah, experience friction because it was about yep trading with a ton of non-responding people for courses <laughs> yep well yep sure <laughs> 40 times per craft <laughs> um we also obviously made a lot of changes to that early as well um in the league but um still it was like you know i know i remember ziz messaged me at one point and it's just like oh my god the amount of quad tabs i need to hold all these corpses and yeah. i'm just like feeling real sad about it it's not <laughs> like you know that was the intention by any means um so yeah i didn't didn't quite hit the mark for sure um just lessons learned lessons for learned for sure day. yeah all right cool um the all flames um had a bit more mixed positive and negative like it was definitely I think the all flames were added the layer of thing in the map customization but it was not the optional that was, was definitely good, the concern we had going into it too much magic and, uh, stuff. it also added just that extra layer of work that you have to do before you can start playing which you know pwa has a fair bit of and for sure fun. and again we um again with the i mean the league being like you know something you do have to generally engage with before doing areas it's again that kind of x factor uh, that makes a league different and makes it feel different but at the end of the day um probably was a little bit too much annoyance to have to do this thing every single area um so but it's certainly we like try to try these things out here and there some people probably thoroughly enjoyed engaging with that stuff of course and i mean into the day leagues are never going to really be for everyone it's never they're always going to have some amount of people who aren't really into it um but look we tried something new we always do like to try something new when it comes to these leagues and a lot of people did enjoy various elements of it um some of it doesn't hit that's all right like we don't do it again right like that's part of it and this is a lesson learned every single league right there are always elements of leagues that don't work 
there are elements we learn from there are elements we don't repeat and then we take the often what we can do is take the stuff that is good that is fun and find a way to integrate it into the game later um and now the core game experience is overall better as a result of us like you know learning from all the stuff yeah. keep the experiments going keep like, going wild with it um we're gonna go rapid fire now so people can get their thirty thousand patch notes their record setting patch <laughs> notes very soon here so uh we had finally the much awaited massive melee changes what was the big thing that was led to you guys pulling the trigger on this issue uh, and, I mean, ulti some melee stuff. ultimately the community, um, people wanted it. Uh, that's what was like the key change that you kind of needed maybe to get figured out. The one, the one that I remember us walking through was, um, there was kind of the, like we made a, a document of like, okay, what are the things that a melee build currently mandatorily needs to know to do? Uh, mm. in order to become to be viable and effectively we had all these multipliers and if you didn't know to do them then you then then you just yeah, sucked it's bad. Um, yeah and so effectively we needed to do something about that to make it so that like you know just just hit things is like a more viable <laughs> path um so uh you know like that, i think this is really looking at that and so that hence, hence why you have um the removal of melee totems and so on um honestly even i was kind of shocked that mark was like let's just straight up remove them i know we talked for a little bit about like maybe there's some way to make it so that like you know you, you don't the builds that use them aren't the same as melee builds or something but in the end it was just like you know what we'll, we'll go we'll go clean slate uh and we'll uh, try to make sure you know let's just let's just get rid of any of these barriers um and um, i think that was probably the right choice i just want you to hit things with your weapon or the hit thing monsters or the ground <laughs> with your weapon <laughs> and things die and you're not having like i don't get me wrong, I want there to be secondary um, axes of skills that are often skill involved. You do have to use them. I don't just want it to be that you have one six link and every single other gem slot is empty. Like, it should be that there are these other axes, but I also want you to be able to choose whether or not which ones you use, which ones you invest in into the tree. Whereas a lot of what was happening before is uh, of, something is often either too powerful that you feel like you have to use it, and all of a sudden now every single build is using this exact same mm. thing, and every single build feels so similar. Like um, whereas really the way that should ideally work is something is much weaker initially and you have to invest into it, into the passive tree and stuff like that to make it good enough but it means that a, different characters will have different secondary specializations and you'll find a lot of these like something like tinctures something like retaliation skills they're going to be quite polarizing people are going to love them or hate them and that's okay that's good um, and mm -hmm. it means that you get these differences in builds right. uh, where you are actually specking into and using these secondary things um, but the one other main thing is I really want it to be less unique item driven mandatory things, right? I don't want uniques to suck, don't get me wrong. I just want it to be that it's like in order to do X, Y, and Z, I must be using this, 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 and now I'm considered viable by the game's standards, you know, yeah, like, like build checklist thing that we, yeah, yeah, it gets, it's gone a little bit too far. Um, and so we're bringing a lot of these mechanics to the forefront on the passive tree, cause that is one way, uh, place. Um, and of course, by having uh, more, like considering when you've got this league, you're going to have Runesmith thing, you've got the um, obviously quality changes apply, so unique. You've got the new modifiers on uh, rare items. You've got, um, like, we haven't buffed the life on every unique, we've buffed it on Calms. That's it, right? So all uniques proportionally just got worse to rare items, quite intentionally, um, so that you know rare item and it's not you know it's not just hiding behind all these things you got to learn and wiki and do all of that so it should be that you can get further without having to have extreme specialized knowledge um especially with melee this time around uh and on top of that like bringing a lot of these hidden mechanics that were like hard to figure out way more to the foreground so you they're just more obvious and you can figure them out and also just yes hit things and they die uh and not feel so like okay i'm hitting things and they're not dying but now i do this thing and this thing and combine this and this and this and this and this and now things get hit and die but that is still there and that will allow you to go even further and even more efficiently and thus get more items and more power of course right we're not dumbing things down um the intention is just to make it that like if you aren't doing all of these things you're not just a a absolute garbage you know in short increasing well, the power of stuff a little bit without the increasing the power of top end stuff is that kind of just melee totems again that's their goal now i mean not in this okay a they're not as powerful implicitly um they are it depends if you what you want to call it like, you can look at the totems from a perspective of yes the, the busy work side of things of i'm having to do this thing every so often sure um but it's also not like if you don't use them it's not like you're bad 
right? You can get damage from so many places. Only one of the banners is giving damage. It's giving a lot less damage. Um, in order to make banners really good, you have to spec into a lot of them onto the tree. They are still kind of good. I do expect a lot of melee characters still to be using them. And I do like the idea that there is, um, you know, skill involved as to thinking, when should I use them? They're not and an then, always up thing like the totems were, which is the biggest correct. issue with and, them. Unless you invest into them, in which case, so I, I, one of the passives that was shown is that banner effects linger for X seconds. They automatically pick up when you exit the radius. So you can place them down and then just sprint and Ooh, then you get the good. effect for seconds and then you can place it again and sure yeah it might end up being like on rotation it's being used for some builds and on others they're being way more tactical with it waiting like doing it during a breach and during this but on regular air monster to monster clearing they're not um kind of want it to be I, I feel like you have a lot more agency with banners um and yeah the other thing of course being getting rid of like, i mean even like berserk we're getting rid of a lot of the extreme high power mandatory things um, that yeah. if you were a player who didn't know about it, all of a sudden you're not, you know, considered viable. Um, and the one other thing we've done there, I know we said rapid fire, but it is, <laughs> it is don't worry, it's part no, of the question. Um, we've made sure to take, we've got spreadsheets out the wazoo of like experience per hour testing. Um, we've got like, you know, time Ooh. testing. We've got like our, uh, one of the people probably see him takes ages, always on the ladder, freaking winning things here and there. Um, <laughs> he has been sitting there running literally doing races uh technically with every single class oh wow uh for the last three months probably straight <laughs> uh every single work, work waking minute he is playing a different character writing down times to kill brutus time to kill this time to get to this time to do this <laughs> xp per hours everywhere what variables make the most difference we've taken all of that data and gone and been like all right these are the outliers on the down on the bottom these are the outliers on the top Let's like find out where the thing should sit. And generally, it's okay, now meant to be if you are a, a character with a melee character, and let's say you've got 70th percentile gear, and you're a, there's a caster next to you that has 70th percentile gear, if you can maintain... Um, well, a, a melee character is generally meant to be stronger and more efficient at that point, of course, but it is easier to take damage and harder to maintain damage uptime as a result so if you can overcome those two axes a melee character with equivalent gear should be better than any other character on a better player in a better player's hands yes yeah. and then a better player can obviously seize that even better and take yep. that even further Ooh. that's fascinating wow um so we've got like new item bases going into much higher little maps and stuff like that as well what kind of led to that change there just making rares matter again um it, making rares matter again is one thing but also it's again adding that very obvious way to keep getting um upgrades throughout endgame um like uh, honestly given how long endgame takes and how much of an integral part of it is like the amount of base types introduced there like sure we had steel rings and two-tone boots but they didn't really make a huge difference yeah um so we're just adding more here it is more clear like if you are struggling in yellow maps you have something you can try and get now to to mm. make that easier for yourself if you're struggling in red maps you have these obvious things that are like this will be an upgrade for me let me actually try and do it um obviously just on the defensive axis for now so you can maybe focus a little bit more of your passives into damage um yes, so there are no along with all the new defensive tools but yes primarily it is like you know a more obvious here's a way that you can upgrade your character and of course for high-end players it's a new thing to strive for to push their character further than ever before um i wouldn't say this specific direct goal is like get rid of unique items that is just a happy uh, happy side effect of you know rare items mattering more once again Right. we'll wrap up pretty much there um we've got lots of new leagues coming back this time is there any other ones you're looking forward to i know people have been asking about the uh trial of the ancients as well whether that sort of stuff's coming back uh trial of the ancestors, ancestors probably too. not maybe for a i don't know you never know yeah, with these things if you had yeah, asked me sentinel i would have said no yeah and now right. it is so you never know with these things honestly I'd, I'd say there's no current plans but okay who knows things change every week around here Guys, this was a massive q and I'm exhausted. It's <laughs> awesome. Let's go take a break and let people read some patch notes. And uh, there'll right. be an FAQ news post wrapping up some of the questions from this, but also ones that we didn't get a chance to get around to. So you guys will start hitting F5 awesome. and read some of those later. See if we can get those so patch much. notes loaded. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank, thank you. And good luck yet. to everyone Thanks, reading those patch notes. Yeah, good luck. Um, <laughs> it might, it'll take a while. Yeah. <laughs> We considered doing audiobook versions of them in the past, but I, I'm not going to be sitting there. I'll have to be reading them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick your favorite yeah. streamer. <laughs> Remem remind them to drink lots of water and enjoy, folks. But that's it for now. I'm Ziggy. Thanks for watching, folks. See you later. Thank you.
All right, still no patch notes that I can see. Oh, you got them. Wait. Oh, they are there. Okay, cool. Let me um. Let me bring them up on here quickly. I'm not going to have an extensive look. Uh, this is just going to be a quick, quick announcement that they're there. Thank you for linking those. Uh, just making sure that that is decrangled. It is excellent. Um, let's go raid someone quickly as well. I will do that from. Let's also raid Khan. Hey, second out. Thank you for the sub. Alright, so we're just going to jump over to Khan quickly. Uh, oh, hang on. I don't want to do that yet. I want to bring up the patch notes first. My mistake. Let's not do that. Let's have a quick look at the patch notes, then we will raid Khan later. Um, Alright, so... Oh, this is going to be a lot. Um, player balance... Let's... Oh, Val skill balance could be interesting. Um, oh, this is just... No major notes on it, just a whole bunch of stuff. Skill balance, oh wow, that's going to take forever to go through. Forever, 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 forever. Um, yeah. This is cool. So they're basically capping monster quantity as well. Lots of lots of good stuff there. Um, lower the lower no, wait, just nuke the GGG scream there. Um, detonate dead. Oh yep. There's only one. Oh, um, corpses that you play balance. Corpses spawned are fifteen percent to. Player sp oh, hang on. Player spawn corpses are no longer affected by modifiers on maps. That's a huge one. Yeah, this line. Player spawn corpses are no longer affected by modifiers on maps is a pretty substantial one. And... Oh, desecrate caps at level 80. Yeah, yeah, that, that's big. Ah, uh, that's massive, isn't it? Like that's that's a huge drawback on the on those. Um, okay, so that's the debt dead nerfs. They're definitely in there. Uh, having a quick look at a few things, but without. Or oh, divination card changes are going to be massive. I think. Rebirth and renewal drops a horn scarab. Okay. Uh, more is never enough. That was uh, so. Rebirth and renewal previously was a gilded, uh, was a winged scarab. More uh, that drops in Acton's nightmare from memory. It's like it's really rare. More is never enough was a gilded scarab. It's now four veiled. Long watch. Um, ooh, grants the fourth vow. Friendship is granting all's uprising, which makes a lot of sense for something related there. Sambodi's wisdom is being turned off as his soul quenched. Oh, because of the quality changes? That makes sense. Uh, boss exclusive div cards can no longer be obtained from Delve, Eldritch, Altars, Expedition, Heist, Incursion. Uh, boss exclusive, I think in this context, does not mean things like the Fracturing Orb div card. Um, I think it means things that drop a boss exclusive unique item. Um, yeah, so Detonate Dead has been gutted, I think. I think that's a gutting, even though it does. It's not actually the word detonate dead. Um, player spawn corpses have lost, have gone from level one hundred to level eighty uh, as their cap, which is significant. Like that's a big drop. And then, yeah, I think debt dead is under control. First thought. All right, I think basically there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, and. Um, Let's try and think of some of the other builds that we'll want to discuss. So, Detonate Dead builds are definitely brought down to Earth. I'm not sure if they're gutted or if they're just brought down to Earth a little bit. 
and then there's a whole bunch of things to other builds that have been significant. What else was there that was big? Where's my... I'm just bringing up my list. One sec. I had a list. Um, oh, let's start with the Holy Relic, the one that I missed in the video. Um, conviction was the word. Not Wave of Conviction. No changes to Holy Relic of Conviction. Uh, that's going to be a popular League starter. Archmage. Um, no changes. Uh, Ice Nova of Frostbolts. No changes to Ice Nova of Frostbolts. I think that's going to be a meta starter. Uh, and so it would be the Archmage builds that do whatever and then spec into that. Unless there's changes to mana, which we'll have a look for at some point. Uh, we have Righteous Fire. No changes listed. Uh, explo oh, hang on. Uh, Fizz taken as X. So, Lightning Coil. Uh, I, I got the sense that I'm making Lightning Coil rarer was one of the key things there. Um, oh, Hatred, they're reversing. Adorned is gutted, is it? Oh my god, Adorned is gutted. Oh my god, that's... Um, they killed it. That's... That's dead, right? Uh, Defiance of Destiny is... Wow, these unique item changes are big. Um, let's have a look at these. These are the things we want to have a quick look through. Um... Yeah, there's going to be a whole lot of things here. There's going to be a lot of stuff. Um, so Defiance of Destiny is still going to be good, but it's not going to be as ridiculous. Um, Eternal Damnation is copying a couple of nerfs, but will still probably be very fine because they're changing the way that Endurance Charges work. And... Alley Heat of the Spectrum buff is interesting. Yeah, I'll have to have a look at that in a sec. Oh, Fizz, added, fizz Damage Taken as Fire on Lethal Pride is gone. Uh, that's huge. Like Costa is getting quite the quite the change there. Oroth Resolve is getting nerfed, but I think that's intended to balance out roughly. Uh, Detonate Dead is gutted. Have a look, or maybe not gutted, but it's hurt hard. Let's have a look at the corpse changes. Desecrate is uh, Desecrate is being really nerfed hard. Uh, what else do you have here? <laughs> Taste of Hate is... Oh, wow. Taste of Hate is really getting um, getting gutted there, too. That's probably... It's not going to be used by the builds that care about it now, but it may still be used. Um, the... Okay. What I think I want to do, I want to go through this in an extensive stream over on YouTube instead. Um, but I will just check Lansing Steel of Spraying. Ooh, no longer has a physical tag. Uh, Lansing Steel of Spraying costs more mana, and that's the only drawback on it. So that's a good question. Chieftain, people are talking about. I'm just going to have a look at the things people are talking about as being... Um, being changed. I'd have a look at Overwhelm. The foe is being removed. That's the one that was... Hmm. Yeah, that's just... Oh, Tafoa is the uh, intermediate one. Okay, so that's... Um... Uh, YouTube will not be immediately. YouTube will have a... Uh, going on YouTube will have at least an hour break. I've got to do some stuff IRL quickly. I, I've got to go get something to eat. I've got to have a shower. I've got to go get some food. Because I'm going to be having lunch during the YouTube stream. No question about it. This is so big. There's so much to go through in this. 
Uh, so I'm thinking that my most likely time, actually I might even go longer than that. So it is currently 8.30am my local. I think I'm going to schedule a stream for YouTube to start either at 10.30, which is now plus two hours, or 11, which is now plus two and a half. Uh, so it won't be immediate. That will be unfortunate for people in Europe, but unfortunately, tyranny of time zones, someone is going to pay no matter when it is. Uh, I think there's just a huge amount to go through here. Oh, Fortified. Fortitude is now only 15 fortification uh, on, on there, so that's fine. Um, all right, we'll have a look at this later. I'm going to go raid Khan, and thank you all. May your Valobs have interesting results, and I will see you around.